and I'll send you something weird. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. You're listening to the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19, 2014. Gold open today at $1,219, silver open at $18.36, and Bitcoin is trading around $393. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch is reporting that the Ferguson police officer behind the shooting death of 18-year-old Michael Brown testified in front of a grand jury on Wednesday. The Post-Dispatch stated that Ferguson Police Officer Darren Wilson spoke for four hours in front of the seven men and five women on the grand jury. Wilson was reportedly cooperative with St. Louis County and federal investigators. The grand jury has been expected to make a decision on whether or not to charge Wilson by mid-October. Earlier this week, CNN reported that St. Louis County Judge Carolyn Whittington had extended the grand jury's deadline until January 7th. It started with a wellness check. It ended with a four-hour standoff between police and a man who allegedly wanted to kill himself. Jose Silva posted live images of the SWAT team pointing guns at his car to the social media site Whisper. Silva recently broke up with his girlfriend. It was she who initially called law enforcement and indicated he may be armed and was making suicidal statements. Hours later, he was clock driving his car over 100 miles per hour and the standoff began. After spraying chemicals into his car to induce nausea, the police arrested him and took him into custody, where he'll spend 72 hours for psychiatric evaluation. No weapons were found. The fire chief garrison of Reno, Nevada, is warning residents to be very aware and very vigilant in response to a recent rise in fires caused by so-called smart meters. The new electric meters send energy use data electronically to electric companies, reducing the need for an in-person meter read. Of the nine fires in the area that appear to be linked to smart meters, one resulted in death. Nevada Electric reports over 70 consumed meters, meaning the cover is melted or breached and soot can be present. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin, at 500 East Benway Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBob's.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. Activists with the Detroit Water Brigade are calling on Detroit citizens to join in the Occupy the Bankruptcy campaign to fight the controversial water shutoffs taking place in the city. The plan calls for a meeting Monday at 8.30 in the morning on the steps of the federal courthouse for a speak-out with families facing water shutoffs. The group is demanding that U.S. Judge Stephen Rhodes immediately stop the shutoff program and create an income-based water affordability plan. Former drone intelligence analyst Heather Linebaugh has begun speaking out in support of alternative treatment methods for post-traumatic stress disorder for veterans. I use yoga a lot. I practice transcendental meditation, and I was actually part of a case study that studying the effects of relaxation massage on people with PTSD and actually studied my sleep patterns when I was able to sleep longer after I got massaged and my mood patterns, like how my mood was while I was in the program getting massage regularly. I used medicinal marijuana for quite some time to sleep at night. Linebaugh served in the United States Air Force from 2009 until March of 2012 as an imagery analyst and geospatial analyst for the drone program during the occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan. A new study suggests that veterans dealing with PTSD may benefit from breathing-based meditation treatment. Researchers with the University of Wisconsin-Madison published the study in the Journal of Traumatic Stress. Chartered psychologist Dr. Kate Sparks with the British Psychological Society said the study showed how breathing is radically affected by how a person is feeling and that deeper, fuller breaths can help manage PTSD symptoms. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. 
located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. We've made significant progress wiring the nation's schools for the internet, but we have to do more. Every child in America should have an internet capable computer in their bedroom at home, preferably with a high resolution webcam. I have been to children's chat rooms and have been shocked and disappointed to find they are frequently empty. Even when these youngsters do manage to find their way online, they lack the skills to do something as simple as pinpoint their location on Google Maps. I long for the day when someone can log onto the Nickelodeon under 13 chat room and type, hey, any kids in here like to play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? I have a Nintendo at my house and be overwhelmed with instant messages. Then I'll know we're doing our job supporting technology in this country. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free, take control of the airwaves here. At 855-453, that's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. Mark, back fresh from Vegas. That's right. guess you probably can't talk about what happened in Vegas, because <laughs> them's the rules. They swear you on the way out that you can't. That's not true, is it? <laughs> well, it's Southwest they do. Oh, really? Oh, man. I, I don't know if you've Boom. seen the, the, uh, the video of the Southwest... The, the who seems he seems a little flaming maybe gay uh, one of their stewardesses Look, he's a steward um I, I saw attendance flight attendants yeah. giving this epic pre-flight instruction speech yeah it was I, hilarious well the the one of the guys who I'm just guessing right like he might be life light in the loafers too. Mm-hmm. Um, gave an awesome one, and maybe it's the same guy. Maybe it's not. But they they kind of pride They're themselves funny. on being They're funny. They're funny yeah. on the the Southwest. Yeah. I always enjoy. I always enjoy that, and they have a good time with that stuff. Anyway, share your thoughts with us here. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Salon dot com has a story about some of the best trolls out there right now at the moment. Uh, the Satanic Temple. As they are calling themselves, we have reported on some of the things that they've been doing in the news recently, and they're back in the news again. Now, you may recall, uh, if you've listened to this uh, this show in the last year, uh, it was earlier this year that Oklahoma, they have a a statue, like a a very large kind of sculpture thing out in front of the Oklahoma State House. And this is a sculpture statue to the Ten Commandments. And basically, the the Satanic Temple has now come into Oklahoma to say that this is sort of where they really made a splash in the news to say, well, if if you're going to allow them to have a statue of the Ten Commandments out front of your state building, well, then we should be able to have ourselves a Satanic statue. And so they've been moving forward with trying to make that happen. It's my understanding that the Oklahoma government guys have put a moratorium on all new statues out in front of no statues now the uh, the state house. But, but don't you think that this is uh, the, the satanic church that you're talking about here? What's, what are the, the, the satanic temple? The satanic temple. That's really what their goal was, right? What their goal was to prevent uh, legislators to to show legislators through lampoon what uh, it meant. To what religious freedom means. Religious freedom means the government doesn't pick a religion. It doesn't uh, take sides. It doesn't pick winners in religion. It means that, um, you know, hey, you know, I'm pretty sure that the Satanic Temple didn't think that the any Oklahoman government was going to allow them to put a giant bronze Baphomet out in front of their courthouse. I don't think they're going to do it in bronze, but they did come up with the actual statue. I mean, they apparently had a $20,000 donation or something like that. Well, this is a really important issue that local politicians who think they can just do whatever they want, they need the looming sword of Damocles in the form of a bronze uh, uh, Baphomet right right there ready to be drilled into the ground if that's what they wish to do. If you you recall, they, they did create the actual statue. They're ready to roll with this as soon as they get the chance to install it in Oklahoma outside of the state house there um, and they've actually made it to where they I think they made a, some sort of a cast to where they can duplicate 
uh, the statue. So they could have more than one of these things in theory. Anyway, it's interesting because it brings up the, the question of separation of church and state, which, of course, was one of the initial reasons for the formation of this country, right, was that there was an official state religion uh, back when you know King George was around. Well, there were plenty and, of state religions in states yeah. around the United States. I mean, I believe New Hampshire had one, uh, the Puritans that are now the um, the uh, Congregationalists. So you're saying that uh, that I didn't realize that that was the case about New Hampshire. I believe so. Uh, well, anyway, one of the formation of the ideas forming the country was that the state shouldn't have a religion, that we should have freedom of religion. And if you want freedom from religion as well, you should have that freedom also. Uh, but the the Satanic Temple is at it again now. It's Orange County, Florida, where a judge has ruled last month that religious pamphlets could be distributed in a school district uh, in Orange County, Florida. And by that, I presume they mean actually in the schools, because uh, obviously in the school district, you can do it if it's on the streets. Uh, in the wake of this ruling, the Satanic Temple is now handing out its own religious literature to Orange County schools called the Satanic Children's Big Book of Activities. The judge ruled that if Christian materials, Bibles, and other literature were allowed to be disseminated, atheist literature should be allowed as well. The Satanic Temple, which was able to petition for a goat-headed statue in Oklahoma, is responding to this ruling with kid-friendly literature of their own. Satanic ten Temple spokesman Lucian Greaves explained to the Raw Story, quote, The organization would never seek to establish a precedent of disseminating our religious materials in public schools because we believe our constitutional values are better served by respecting a strong separation of church and state. However, if a public school board is going to allow religious pamphlets and full Bibles to be distributed to students, as is the case in Orange County, Florida, we think the responsible thing to do is ensure that these students are given access to a variety of differing religion or religious opinions, as opposed to standing idly by while one religious voice dominates the discourse and delivers propaganda to the youth. So that sounds to me like a bunch of uh, atheists lampooning a bunch of Christians. Doesn't that sound that way to you? It sure does come off that way. and in That's why I think that... Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I guess I I guess I support their efforts, but I just feel like yeah, you know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe atheists just can't get their message across. Maybe this is what has to be done. Well, they're certainly not pushing a message of atheism, though, right? I mean, if they were atheists, then why? You know, they say here that the atheists are allowed to go and distribute atheist literature. That's what the judge's decision essentially said. So, if they were wanting to do atheisty sort of things, why not come right out and have some American atheist pamphlets or something like that? Well, why not let uh, you know Muslims or Buddhists or whomever distribute pamphlets in schools? I, I don't know exactly what I think about it. If every religion can do it. I suppose it's not that big of a problem, but generally in geographic areas in the United States, most geographic areas, um, you have, uh, you know, one religion tends to be more dominant than others. Well, what I find myself wondering is who is doing the distributing? Uh, are they allowing adults to come on the school campus and hand out this information? If not, uh, is it only the students that are allowed to do it? And if that's the case... It would seem like it'd be pretty difficult to find satanic children to go on the campus and uh, and essentially engage in this trolling behavior. It does seem strange. Yeah. So I'm interested in knowing more about the case. Maybe you're there in Orange County in Florida and uh, you can comment. The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. But the, what they're giving out or what they intend to give out, I don't know if they've actually done it yet, the article says that they are, is the Satanic Children's Big Book of Activities. And ultimately, it, it's it's a, kind of a coloring game book sort of thing. They've got to connect the dots uh, with a head of Baphomet oh, and God. some numbers around it. Uh, and that if you connect the dots, you uh, make a pentagram, apparently, out of You know, that. I kind of hope that this never gets distributed to a single child. <laughs> There's, uh, let's see, there's a, there's a, one of the, the, like, compare the pictures sort of things. Annabelle is spreading knowledge and helping to dispel fear and ignorance by demonstrating her satanic ritual for her class. Help find six differences to help her. And then there's a jumble where there's some, you know, mixed up letters for words. I haven't taken the time to actually unjumble these, uh, these words, but I suspect, okay. uh, I suspect they are going to be, uh, Satan related. Uh, there's a coloring uh, page in the book. Here's about 10 page words. There's a word search uh, as well. So uh, those are some of the activities. There's a maze in the book. And 
kids would be into this, right? Like if you handed a, a child a book of fun activities. When you go to a restaurant, they'll have, uh, you know, um, they'll have the, the, the activity sheet. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, like you go through the maze and you can end up, uh, you know, right at Roy Chicken's house or whatever. It's very much like that. So Graves also explains that uh, it's an opportunity for children to learn about and be exposed to other religions. He says, I'm quite certain that all of the children in these Florida schools are already aware of the Christian religion and its Bible. And this might be the first exposure these children have to the actual practice of Satanism. We think many students will be very curious to see what we offer. So we'll uh, continue here. You are welcome to share your thoughts. Is this what you'd like to see in your local school district? Is, you know, the ability for churches to come on campus and recruit, hand out propaganda to students? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And I'm somebody who has gone uh, on school campus after school hours, like right as school's gotten out and handed out propaganda to students. So I think it should be legal uh, for this to happen. During school hours, I think that gets a little bit iffy, but your thoughts are welcome. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Prim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877 882 7221. That's 877 882 7221. Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. Toll free here, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features we've got there for you. This is the live Saturday show, and of course, you can bring up anything that you want, though we've started out the program with the Satanic Temple at it again. This time, they've come up with a Satanic Activity book. Uh, that they intend to distribute in Orange County, Florida, after a judge has decided to allow uh, groups to distribute Bibles and pamphlets and whatever. He's, uh, the judge says that uh, an atheist group could distribute pamphlets, Christians can leave Bibles inside the school, so now the Satanic Temple is uh, bringing their propaganda to the table. And this is kind of the door that one leaves open when one um, decides to allow organizations to distribute their religious materials. Would love to hear how you feel about it. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Mark, where is the best place to get this new decentralized currency, new on the terms of the world currencies? Uh, Bitcoin's been around for about five years now, but it's still relatively new to the scene. Where's the best place to get this amazing technology? ExpressCoin. You can get several different cryptocurrencies at ExpressCoin, and that's what Bitcoin is. It's a cryptocurrency that's online, peer-to-peer, open source. It can't be counterfeited. It, uh, it can't be inflated by governments. It's international. It doesn't have any governmental attachments, and it allows you complete control over your currency as opposed to, I don't know, giving it to a bank that is you know, decides whether or not the government can shut down your account and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, credit card companies, they decide when the chargebacks occur, not you, the retailer. So I, I think Bitcoin's amazing. And uh, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, the other coins that uh, ExpressCoin sells, they're very similar in many ways. You can buy them either in the U.S. or in Canada. And all you have to do is either you can use a money order check or wire transfer, or you can make a deposit at a local credit union and have your cryptocurrency in your account by the next business day. That's a pretty good gig. Expresscoin.com. If you use coupon code FTL and you get fewer than $40 worth of whatever the cryptocurrency is you purchase, you can get it at no charge at all. The fee's relatively low with Expresscoin. 3%. I don't know anybody else who's that low. But you can do it with for no fee at all just to try it out. Expresscoin.com, coupon code FTL. That's FTLs in Free Talk Live. So there's been a lawsuit that's been dismissed out of the Orange County School District where atheists were trying to stop, apparently, uh, the Christians from putting Bibles inside public schools. But instead, the judge says anybody can leave uh, information in these schools. And so now the Satanic Temple is, uh, is they put together an activity, kind of a coloring book, fun games kind of book. So can the school stop anybody from dis everybody from d distributing this stuff now? I mean, uh, would it have to go back to court is, I guess, what my question is. I guess, the, I, well, I, in theory, I guess the school could change policy and, uh, and dissuade or pr prevent anyone from leaving information there but right that's now, probably their best move and it probably will get the least amount of press well we'll look into details on what's going to happen in orange county but right now i want to hear from you and how you feel about this it's a freedom of speech issue and should people be able to do this sort of thing on a government school campus Anne is with us and Lori actually listening in madison to wxxm the mike 92.1 hey Anne Lori. are you there Anne Lori? i'm there can you hear me yeah we got you go ahead I wanted to tell you the background of this lawsuit because it was brought by our law, our organization, the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Oh, please and do. We're a, national, we're a national group based here in Madison, Wisconsin, and we were working with our Central Florida Free Thought Community chapter 
um, after they were uh, the Orange County Schools permitted a highly evangelical organization to supposedly passively distribute Bibles, New Testament Bibles. What is passively almost, distribute? Does that mean just setting well, them someplace? They, were, they put them on a table, and they were uh, supposed to only be there enough to keep supplies on the table, but there were a lot of abuses of that where they were uh, hailing students and doing a whiteboard with a lot of religious messages on it. Mm -hmm. And when we got complaints about that, uh, we asked to distribute our own literature, and including a lot of literature such as um, Richard Dawkins' God Delusion and Christopher Hitchens' God is Not Great and the Born Again Skeptic's Guide to the Bible and some brochures that I had written a brochure, Why Women Need Freedom from Religion, and so on. And a number of our submissions, almost all of them, were censored. And so we went to court, uh, alleging, of course, that there was viewpoint discrimination. Mm -hmm. And they brought up a lot of complaints about our literature, saying that this wasn't appropriate for high school-age children. And our literature was um, analyzing what was wrong with passages in the Bible. And these passages in the Bible were equally um, graphic or... uh, you know, the well, Bible is a very graphic violent. book. Well, the, right. the, the, the Christian and group so was giving didn't... away the Bible, and you right. were analyzing the passages in the Bible. Right, or, or our literature was, mm-hmm. and so it was censored. And so we had to go to federal court. <laughs> and although um, our case was dismissed in May because basically the school district agreed that it wouldn't censor any of our materials, and it said that there would be a handout day, Religious Freedom Day, sometime in January, and that we would be now allowed to distribute our material. But we're still litigating it. We appealed some of it because our concern is that there's no written policy, and we're fearful that the same thing will happen again. Right. So, in the meantime, so what you're concerned is is that on this supposed Religious Freedom Day, that all of a sudden the rules will change, and then they'll demand right. that you go to court again. Right. Mm-hmm. Or you'll so, be stuck in the um, closet. We just had a negotiation at the 11th Circuit, and um, so that will continue. But in the meantime... We contacted various groups, including the Satanic Temple, because we knew they were interested in state church issues, and we encouraged them to contact the school to do their own distribution. So we're very pleased with all of the fallout on this. I mean, we think it proves the point that religion, atheism, any anything like that is divisive in our public schools. And if they're going to allow so-called passive distribution of Bibles, then they cannot keep out atheists, Satanists, Anybody, actually, right. I think, yeah. on anything. Well, I think we that think... the one thing here is is when you say it's destructive to our public schools, I'd like to point out that these aren't our public schools. They're their public schools. If they were our public schools, they wouldn't have any problem. You wouldn't have any problem distributing whatever you wanted to because right. they'd be ours. I've been banned from the school <laughs> district campus here because I've been on the campus handing out information in the past, and I have a lifetime ban Uh, from the entire Keene School District. Public schools in a democracy are always going to be controlled by the organization that's most powerful. And here on the North American continent, it's going to be some time before uh, you see... Uh, you know, some organization besides the Christian church in the religious arena be least powerful. That's why. I think that that there's a difference between even political speech and religious speech because we don't have a separation of state and politics. We have a separation of state and religion. And the Gideon Society massively violates the law, handing out New Testament uh, Bibles throughout the nation against the law to fifth graders. And, and Laurie, give me a plug students. for your organization again. What was it? It's the Freedom from Religion Foundation, and f- you can find us at ffrf.org. We will be glad to send anyone a sample of Great. our The Freedom from Scott Religion State. Foundation. Thanks. I appreciate you calling in tonight. Thanks. And thank you, thank for, you very much. for making that call, Ann Laurie from Madison. Our toll free number is 855 450 free. You can take control. Share your thoughts. Whatever's on your mind. This is Free Talk Live. My name's Bruno. I'm 52 years old. I've tried different protein powders over the years, and they've all tasted pretty bad. I tried One World Way and found it to be delicious. After 10 weeks on One World Way, my wife commented, you have more muscles and you're leaner than when you were 20 years old. My body has changed dramatically. I'm a cyclist. Normally, I'll ride two days on and take two days off. After being on One World Way, I rode 10 days in a row in over 100-degree heat, and then I take another two servings of One World Way. 
and then work out at the gym for another hour and a half. I just couldn't believe these results. My normal muscle tightness and soreness after working out are virtually gone. Don't take my word for it. One World Way comes in single serving. Just give it a try. One World Way is derived from Amish, grass-pastured cows and is newly reformulated to be higher in protein. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable you. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition of the program. We'll take your calls about anything, though. On the table for discussion is the the question, uh, sort of a a larger discussion about religious freedom and, you know, whether the state should be involved in allowing people to distribute religious propaganda at government schools, or should it be prohibited uh, completely? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can chime in on that. You can also join us on Skype. Forgot to mention that earlier. We've got Skype username lrn.fm, so feel free to uh, contact us there. You do need to send a contact request first. We'll approve it, and then after that, you can easily call us. Hey, coming up, we're going to be in uh, Walt Disney World, actually. Mark, you and I are going to be there. I think Stephanie and Brian from our Sunday show, uh, we're all going to be there broadcasting live. It's going to be happening October 4th through October 6th. What is it? It's Coins in the Kingdom. It's a Bitcoin party. Now, we've been to Bitcoin conventions before. This is being described as a Bitcoin party. 
And I imagine it's going to be somewhat like a convention because they are going to have speakers who, sure. you know, you might be interested in hearing talk like Charlie Shrem, who is a Bitcoin pioneer. The feds came after him recently. Uh, I'm sure he'll be telling his story. Jeremy Gardner from the Cryptocurrency College Network. Kyle Drake of Project Skyhook, which is one of the Bitcoin vending machine companies. Will Pangman from Topeak. Davi Barker from Bitcoin Not Bombs, Perry Ann Boring from the Chamber of Digital Commerce, Pamela Morgan from Empowered Law, so many more. You can go to coinsinthekingdom.com, get the full list of speakers there. Tickets are just 60 bucks. I'm just shocked at yep. how affordable that is. There's no excuse. I mean, if you're in the Southeast, there's no excuse to not come to Coins in the Kingdom. And it's going to be happening again Saturday, October 4th through Monday, October 6th. That's just about two weeks away from where we are right now. So don't miss this. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be broadcasting live from the event. I'm looking forward to it. Fun, by the way, is mandatory. And you can come celebrate magic internet money. That is Bitcoin at the Magic Kingdom. Go to coinsinthekingdom.com. Get registered. We'll look forward to seeing you there. We're going to continue taking your calls and thoughts. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. There's an atheist group that actually we just happened to hear from because we're on the air in Madison, Wisconsin. The Freedom From Religion Foundation is uh, they had been involved in a lawsuit down in the Orange County School District in Florida where essentially there was a Christian group, the Gideons and others, I guess, that had been distributing propaganda on school campus. <clears throat> yeah, The atheists sought to do the same thing. Well, you know, and that's what they were, they were just trying to, to see what was fair. And then the court said that, yes, they could, in fact— um, The court actually dismissed the case, dismissed but the case somehow that resulted in them being able to do this thing. Right. But, they, but that's because the school board, like, backed down and they had, they allowed them to, to do it, supposedly. Right. And then so they contacted the, the Freedom From Religion group, then contacted the Satanists um, to see that they could get them on board. And the Satanists decided, oh, we've got a coloring book. Yeah, they and, do. Um, they're distributing that. Now, I've got to say, uh, it all sort of makes me very uncomfortable. And here's the reason. I don't think that anybody should be ha obligated to pay for an organization that doesn't teach their core values. Mm -hmm. I think that's wrong. I think it is wrong. By that, you mean the, the government schools. Right. I mean, so if you're a fundamentalist Christian, you should not be obligated to pay for a, a, a school that doesn't teach what it is that you want taught to kids. That's a and, good point. Or allows someone to come on campus and propagandize your uh, your son or daughter. And I, I don't I, I don't honestly see any reason why people who don't have kids should be obligated to pay for other people's kids going to school. I homeschool my child, but um, I'm obligated to pay taxes to uh, an organization where it looks to me, for all the world, a bunch of middle-class people send their kids. I want to come back around to that discussion, so hold that thought, Mark. Let's get Maureen on the line here. She's calling from Norfolk, Virginia, listening to WNIS. Maureen, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. Hey. Um, I just wanted to kind of weigh in. My son, I put him in Catholic school basically because of the academic um, background he would get, mm -hmm. and yet he would, of course, get um, the Catholic religion as well. Right. And I had him baptized, and I had him go through First Communion, but when it came time for confirmation, he was about 11 or 12 when he started questioning things, and he did his own research, and he researched various religions not through the school, but his own research. And he came to me when it came to confirmation time, and he said, I don't think I'm willing to commit, because he says, doesn't that mean that I'm making a commitment to the church, and I've really thought about it, and this is what I want? And I said, that's exactly what it means. And he says, I think I'm too young to make that kind of a commitment. Hmm. And I said, well... In that case, I don't think you should be doing it. And so he didn't. But that was something that, because we always talked about religion at home. And um, we talked about all kinds of religions. We didn't talk about just one religion. And we talked about all types of belief systems as well. And I think that it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the school system. I do believe very strongly in separation of church and state. And I don't think that it necessarily has any place in the school system. 
So w would you suggest, and by the way, I, I appreciate that kind of parenting, uh, the openness of allowing uh, a son or daughter to kind of do their own research and, and not necessarily shoving one religion down their throats. Were you a Catholic or is it you, you just picked the Catholic school for other reasons? Well, I was raised Catholic, mm -hmm. and I know that I got a good academic um, um, background from it. Oftentimes, the Catholic and, school will be the best school in, in a given geographic area. But you weren't a, a practicing Catholic at that time? Right. I was gotcha. not a practicing Catholic. And um, as a matter of fact, I got into trouble when it came to baptismal classes because I had to go as a parent. And because of my questioning and everything, um, I, you know, well, you just can't question this. But, um, you know, I did question this. And so they weren't really pleased with me. So were you saying but that you think I, that, that uh, churches and atheists and Satanists should be prevented from giving out information on the school campuses? I, I don't know that. Um, see, it depends. Like, when you're talking about this coloring book thing that mm -hmm. the um, Satanists are talking about, that sounds like it's an awfully young type of project. And I'm not sure that that that's an, an age group that the school should be involved with. Oh, I agree. I think it's a parent's. <laughs> It's a parent's decision. I think this is a and, terrible idea. I sincerely hope the Satanists yeah. consider it a terrible idea too, and that that's the reason yeah. they're doing it. I I'm of I, I suppose what I believe here is that the Satanic Temple is a bunch of atheists in disguise, right? And uh. that what their intention is is to uh, lampoon the uh, you know the school into realizing that hey, you know what you don't want. You don't want us handing this material out to seven-year-olds. Maureen, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We do have the Satanic Temple's activity book here. It's a 10-page PDF. It's called the Satanic Children's Big Book of Activities. And the front page is it's in color. You've got two youngsters they look probably maybe elementary, middle school age, hard to really judge by a cartoon, uh, but cartoony style, you know, something you might see on Nickelodeon. It's got that kind of look to it. And uh, they're on the front page. One of them's got a pentagram T-shirt. The other one has a Baphomet head T-shirt. And it says brought to you by the Satanic Temple, the Satanic Temple dot org. Now, I thought, Mark, that they were going to have like they had the word jumble. You know, where you have to un rearrange the letters of the words. Yeah. I thought they were going to be satanic related words, but I was wrong, actually. They got in the back page the, the key, basically, so you can check You didn't your look answers. for the answers? Huh? You didn't look for the answers? I did. I'm looking at the okay. key right now. I didn't take the time to do the jumbles. Uh, but actually, the jumble answers are not surprisingly satanic oriented. That's uh, friendship, compassion, respect, empathy, justice, reason, and freedom. Uh, their word search has words like games, fun, acceptance, love. So certainly not the uh, the most offensive content, although I'm sure Christians will not be happy about the uh, the pentagram connect the dots with the Baphomet head in it. Uh, toll free number here tonight is 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. We'd love to hear your thoughts on freedom of religion. It's free Talk Live. A world without breast cancer is a world with more birthdays. And by signing up for the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, you will help us get there faster. Because you're helping the American Cancer Society make the greatest impact and save more lives in more communities through groundbreaking research and access to screenings for women who need them. Walk in Making Strides Against Breast Cancer because you can help us finish the fight. Sign up today at makingstrideswalk.org. Bellawood Flooring has changed its finishing process. So for the first time ever, Lumber Liquidators is clearing out their current stock of Bellawood at unbelievable prices. Get Bellawood Red Oak Solid pre-finished hardwood for an incredible $2.99 per square foot. That's over 30% off already low prices. Even stunning, solid Bellawood Bolivian Rosewood for an amazing 51% off. These are not seconds. This is first quality with a transferable 100-year warranty. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 18-month financing is available. But hurry, these clearance deals end Tuesday. Question, could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. 
A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. If you're David, a few well-chosen words can help level the playing field with Goliath. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com. Recently, I saw a Yellow Pages ad for an appliance repair company, and the headline read, Why Wait for Sears? If you're going to the Yellow Pages, the Dead Sea Scrolls of Advertising, you're ready to buy right now. So this is an attention-grabbing message. And how about the plumber whose radio ad says, Call by noon Thursday, and we'll be there Saturday at no extra cost. Smart guy. Most plumbing firms give their crew the weekend off. This one gives them Sunday and Monday off. In the words of a respected advertising executive, cut to the chase, make it quick, and tell me exactly what you can do for me, especially if you're looking for work. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Why does a U.S. orthodontist make more than some CEOs? You get that dental bill and you'll know. Implants, partial or full bridge, the kids need braces? Fractions of U.S. prices. Balloon angioplasty for heart patients in the U.S. is $50,000. Thailand, under $7,000. Heart bypass, joint and hip replacement, cancer, many procedures under the price of your Obamacare deductible and copay. Don't risk bankruptcy. Hit us up now. We'll show you how at asiarunlikehellguide.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, live Saturday edition. We'll take your calls about whatever you want. The number is 855 free though on the table tonight to discuss, we uh, brought in the story about the Satanic Temple. They're at it again. Now they've got themselves an activity book, kind of like a coloring book with games uh, involved, a jumble, a word search. And they intend to and or are already distributing this coloring book, game book, out at Orange County, Florida schools, where apparently all religions and atheists and Satanists are allowed to put their propaganda out there. Uh, apparently, they're not physically... Well, they're having a, re- a religion day or something. Right. According to uh, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, we actually had one of their reps call us up just randomly. They happen to be listening. Uh, they were the ones involved in the lawsuit that secured this distribution freedom. And the idea is that they are allowed to leave their propaganda on some sort of a table at the school, not that they would be there physically handing it out. Although uh, there's some larger issues involved here, and and Mark, you were beginning to touch on it a moment ago, and that is that you don't appreciate being forced to pay for a system that you don't agree with. And whether it's because you're an atheist or because you're a Christian or or whatever, I happen to know that you have a religion, although it's, you know, not a specifically named one. Maybe Quaker would probably be closest. I'm a Quaker. Um, But, uh, you know, that uh, that you feel like it's it's an offense that you'd be forced to pay for a school system that is giving uh, you know, questionable information or information you don't agree with to your children. Well, I think that and- it would be impossible for somebody to not disagree with some information that is being uh, you know, propagandized inside of a school. 
right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's so much information that goes on in 13 years. I personally am not very fond of the fact that, you know, we're (laughs) that the government gets to extract money from me to create a government school system where they can then talk about how what a great solution to problems the state is. Um, I personally think that that's destructive and completely unfair. But I, you know, I mean, it's obvious that other people are going to have different problems, and those people shouldn't have to pay for that either. So I want to get to your calls and thoughts. The number here is toll-free, and it's brought to you by ProXPN. It's 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. And get yourself a free pound of some of the best coffee out there at Coffee. Dot freetalklive.com. This is BuzzBox. Now, Mark, you are a huge coffee drinker, and you you well, drink, what, a pot of this stuff every single day? It's yeah, that good. More so now that I have BuzzBox. It's really good coffee. Um, it's 100% organic and top 1% grade Arabica beans, so the best of the best beans. And it's shade-grown, which is good for people who get that kind of acidy reflux thing going on with coffee. But really what sets BuzzBox Coffee apart, because you can get high-end, shade-grown coffee over the internet. You're not going to get it at a grocery store. The stuff you're getting at a grocery store is going to be Robusto beans that are, um, you know, sun-grown, and they're likely to give you all kinds of acid reflux. And they're certainly generally not organic. But um, what BuzzBox does is they allow us to work with Kiva.org to give microloans to people around the world. So whether somebody's looking to... I don't know, put a new engine in their taxi cab or to, you know, get some restaurant equipment or to buy some appliances so they can fix them and mm-hmm. sell them to other people in their community. Uh, one, one lady needed a sewing machine. And we're able to help them get a loan to do what, you know, we're able to loan to them the money so that they're able to get what they need to make their life better. And then when they pay it back, we can give that money to somebody else. So we're constantly putting loans back out there. Yeah. The more Free Talk Live listeners sign up at coffee.freetalklive.com, the more loans that we can give out. Absolutely. And these help keep people get the hand up. You're not talking about doing something for a community, giving a bunch, giving away money or food or these kinds of things, which, you know, all those are fine and dandy, but I kind of believe in you, you teach somebody to fish and they'll fish for a lifetime. And that's mm-hmm. what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the thing that that individual is passionate about, that that individual believes that they can make their life better with. And if you believe like me, just get your coffee that you you drink coffee every day in all likelihood. Get your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Get yeah. a free pound there. Try it out, and then you can continue to with the subscription. Now, the subscription is you can adjust. So if you don't drink a whole pot per day, maybe you only drink a cup or two, uh, you can adjust your subscription to deliver the coffee as often as you need it in the amount that you are requesting. That's right. I get uh, four pounds every six weeks. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you're on the high end of their customer scale? I don't know. Anyway, it'd be interesting to see what the, how that breaks down. Go to uh, coffee.freetalklive.com. Grab yourself a free pound. Just pay the shipping cost and cancel any time. Let's go to Mark in Charleston, South Carolina. You are on Free Talk Live. Hey, Mark. Hi there. I, I always think I'm an extreme libertarian until I chance to be around the radio to hear you guys. <laughs> Thank God. Really Somebody <laughs> can finally be more extreme than you. <laughs> uh no, I, I, I'm a big believer in, in public schools, although I don't think they should ever be used as a forum to uh, propagandize anyone in any way other than simply treating, you know, uh, to educate children. Well, wait a minute. I mean, the nature history, of the public, you know. the government school system is propaganda. I mean, that they're constantly propagandizing the students in favor of the state. I mean, it's not like the public schools or the government schools are going to talk bad about the government. I, I can't. I cannot disagree with you. I, that's that's why I enjoy hearing. Your so, views. isn't that uh, a, a contradiction then in your beliefs? Like you support public schools, but at why the same do you support? Time? So that's a better well, question. Is, I, why I, do you support government schools? I support government schools, I guess, because I came out of that system uh, in gra- graduating in the early 1970s from high school and and got an excellent education. Uh, although even back then, I thought it was very strange when we'd have the uh, uh, assemblies where uh, someone like Jimmy Swagger would address us and that sort of thing. I, do you I think your education in the early 1970s not. when you graduated, do you think your education was better than the private schools in your town? Um, depends upon the schools since both my mother and one of my aunts went to parochial schools, even though they were Protestants. Uh, 
and that, that was considered to be the best education at the time. But I mean, by by my experience, I got an excellent education. Well, I, I wouldn't disagree I, that, but gener- generally, what people will yeah. say with uh, private with private schools is that private schools uh, provide a better education generally than public schools provide because a public school like some kid can wind up really well educated and many kids wind up really poorly educated it's a much wider spectrum of education that comes out of public school and what i always think of is um when i hear that because i went to both public and private and i can tell you the private education was significantly better than the public education that i got um was that you know like the marketplace is providing better schools we know who's going to provide a better school, and that's an organization that has to compete sure. to provide a better education. Because they're not guaranteed. The private school is not guaranteed money from the parents, unlike the government schools, which doesn't matter how poor of a job they're doing, they're going to get funding the next year. Based on some of the politically incorrect nonsense that I, I hear reported about public schools now, uh, I have to say you are right. Um, I, I, I don't. I guess I would be nervous about scrapping the entire public school system and that sort of thing. Is it because of poor people? Schools. Yeah, but well, and, you know, it, so in, to me, in principle, you're right. I, I don't know how one would affect it. Uh, oh, OK, let me I, run I a proposal. Let me run a proposal by you, Mark. Think about it this way. Okay. Um, what you know that you feel like you got a good education. You can read, you can write, you can do arithmetic or whatever. And of course, it's arguable that the education isn't as good now as it was back then. That's another point. But beyond that, what you don't know is how much better it could have been. So you felt it was adequate. You felt it was good. Uh, but it could have been excellent. It could have been awesome, right? And uh, and you wouldn't know that. We would never. We'll never really know how great education could be until it's finally open to the marketplace to provide competing types of education to where the price would get driven down. Because we know how crazy expensive government schools are. The per pupil cost is insane. Well, monopolies never have low prices, <laughs> right? So you get the uh, crazy prices. So even if you are getting a decent education, and there's plenty of kids in government schools who are not, uh, but even if you are getting a decent education, you're paying through the nose for it, whereas if we had a free market in education, maybe we'd see great education for an affordable price. I mean, wouldn't that be better? Oh, I I, I, I do agree with you there. Uh, I Like I say, I, I'm, that's why I like listening to you. I, I like hearing proposals for, for fixing something. So here's, uh, here's my proposal that, specifically to keep the government schools, the, the public schools, sort of, right? My proposal is, let's turn them over to the teachers and the staff. Give the staff ownership of those schools. Let them decide their curriculum. Let them decide the rules and the, the, you know, the amounts they need to charge. And get the government out of the picture entirely. Get rid of taxes as far as the funding method. And essentially set them free. Set those schools free from the government system, from the federal bureaucracy and all these stupid federal rules. What's this, No Child Left Behind or the, the new thing that they've got? Common the Core. Common Core. Set it free from all those strictures and then see what happens and let them see if they can make it on their own. You don't have to get rid of the schools themselves. They can still exist. Thanks, Mark, for the call. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, September 20th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.85 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,216 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $416. Antiwar.com reports, major gun battles erupted in the Yemeni capital of Sana'a with at least 120 killed in fights between the Shiite Houthi rebels and the Yemeni military, and thousands of civilians fleed their homes to escape the clashes. The Houthis had been protesting the government and trying to negotiate a settlement when fighting erupted in their homeland in the nation's far north. After rooting pro-government Sunnis, they marched their forces on the capital. Early reports are emerging that the fighting in the capital is forcing the Hadi government to make further concessions to the Houthis, and a negotiator claimed a deal is in place that will end the fighting by today. Details of the deal are scant, but it is believed to include Hadi's previous offer of a new premier and a rollback of some austerity measures, as well as an agreement to grant the Houthis certain key ministerial positions in the new government. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. Fans are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the fans program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot fppradio.com. The New York Times reports Alex Salmon, who led Scotland's failed bid for independence, announced on Friday that he would step down as the first minister of Scotland and the leader of the Scottish National Party later this year. The unexpected announcement came the day after voters spurned the vision of Scottish sovereignty that had propelled his political career for decades and voted decisively in a referendum to continue Scotland's 307-year-old union with Britain. Mr. Salmond was by far the most prominent casualty of the defeat. The independence campaign that he led sent shockwaves through Britain's political elite, energizing Scottish politics as rarely before and appeared to open the way for a looser, more federal Britain. After starting far behind in the polls, the independence campaign appeared to close the gap in the final weeks, and in some surveys, it even seemed to take a slight lead. But once the ballots were tallied, the No campaign had won 55.3% of the vote. Queen Elizabeth II, who is precluded from intervening in politics, urged Scots on Friday to seek unity and work together in the wake of the vote, saying, For many in Scotland and elsewhere today, there will be strong feelings and contrasting emotions among family, friends, and neighbors. Now, as we move forward, we should remember that, despite the range of views that have been expressed, we have in common an enduring love of Scotland, which is the one thing that helps to unite us all. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. 
Reuters reports U.S. officials hope to prevent two diplomatic challenges with Iran from colliding next week, the Iranian nuclear program and the threat posed by militants of the Islamic State. Their basic dilemma is how to keep Iran from hardening its stance in the nuclear talks out of a belief, which U.S. officials say would be misguided, that Washington might make nuclear concessions in exchange for help against the Islamic State. A related problem is how to address the threat from the Sunni militant group without somehow enlisting the help of Iran, which has extensive influence in Iraq and Syria. A third difficulty is whether major Sunni states, such as Saudi Arabia, would be willing to participate in any coalition against the Islamic State if Iran played any role at all. A senior Western diplomat said on the condition of anonymity, in the long run, it will be difficult to find solutions without Iran. Mainly, the Americans are against that, but there are still some members in the Arab region who are not very comfortable sitting with Iran at the same table. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Well, our own Rebecca Mara takes us on a tour of the Olympic Village. We have a full-size bed, oh, yeah? lounge area, shower, yes. plenty of space, which is great because I'm constantly having sex in there. The village is a temporary home to the world's most physically impressive athletic men and women. It was important to the Olympic Committee to give them a comfortable, state-of-the-art area to f*** each other's brains out while they're not competing. We have a, a pool where they can have a sex, a theater where they can have a sex. All these athletes are hot, horny, ready to go. Mm -hmm. They deserve the best. I was in Vancouver and where I got eaten up by this French speed skater. I have to say, these facilities are even better and I'm going to try to f a Japanese guy. You've spared no expense. These athletes deserve the best. They sacrifice so much for their countries. They deserve to be able to f until their b and boys can't take it anymore. And these facilities won't go to waste. Once the Olympics are over, they'll be converted to a resort where Russian businessmen can come to f their prostitutes. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free. We're live here on Saturday night, unless we're not. And what I mean by that is your radio station may be not airing us live. We're, our live hours are 7 to 10 o'clock at night Eastern Time. So if you're hearing us later, or maybe you're listening via podcast, uh, you can always make a point of calling us during the live show. And by the way, we do this show seven nights a week, so there's always live Free Talk Live every single day of the year, even during holidays. Uh, For years. We are live. So join us here on the phones at 855-450-FREE. If you're just tuning in, we are talking about the Satanic Temple. They're in the news again as a result of a court decision dismissing a case in uh, the Orange County area of Florida in regards to distribution of religious information on government school campus. Let me give you a little bit of background on this story, and you're welcome to share your thoughts on religious freedom in schools, out of school, whatever, government schools in general. We can talk about anything here on Free Talk Live. No topic is forbidden. Uh, the toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. By the way, with you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. WFTV.com, Channel 9 in the Orlando area, has the story out of Orange County. A judge dismissed a lawsuit. This came from Thursday, September 4th. Judge dismissed a lawsuit against the Orange County School District. Uh, before the dispute could uh, play out in court, the school board agreed that an atheist group could distribute its pamphlets when Christian groups leave Bibles inside certain public schools. But officials would not tell WFTV why they changed their minds. Uh, seems pretty obvious to me. They were facing a lawsuit in this case, and they managed to essentially settle the case by agreeing to allow the atheists to distribute their propaganda. That's better, I think, for them than actually having the judge make a decision ultimately after the you know the suit would proceed through the, the court system. Yeah, sounds preferable to me. Uh, the atheist group was allowed to leave pamphlets about atheism at schools like Boone High School last year, but they claimed the district censored their views, so they took it to court. In fact, we had the group, uh, actually had one of the members of the group just happen to call in. It's the Freedom From Religion Foundation. And they're, now they're concerned that the school's going to have this Freedom of Religion Day where purportedly the atheists and various religious groups will be allowed to leave information on the school campus. But their concern is that once again they'll run up against issues with the bureaucrats doing something shifty 
you know, taking the information that the atheists leave and putting it on the bottom shelf or something like that, or or somehow censoring or removing putting stuff it, over it, mis- right? Mysteriously removing it, or who knows what sort of scummy thing that they might do, and then ultimately the, they're going to well, have to sue again at that. Consider point. for a second that this isn't fair play, Ian. I mean, <laughs> the people we're we're talking about here believe firmly that they're saving people's souls. You don't want to fair play with Satanists when you're talking about somebody spending the rest of their life in eternal damnation. You don't want that information to fall into people's hands. And that's really the problem here is you're talking about people's closely held beliefs. And this is what's difficult because you're, you're saying is to a mother who comes to school to drop their kid off, that she can't spend 10 minutes outside raising her hands to heaven, Mm. praying for a good day, a good safe day in the school. I think she should be able to. I... I, I don't know what I what I think is is this is such a confusing problem that the the problem is p- government school in at, you know at the very core. I totally agree. In fact, we were discussing this. Last I went hour. to Bradenton Christian School in Manatee County, Florida, for nine years of my schooling, and nobody would have had a problem for one second if a parent wanted to stop their car, and I believe some probably did, you know, and have a prayer that their kid would have a good, safe but day. But they would have a problem if the Satanic Temple wanted to come on campus and hand out Satanic and pamphlets. And they would be completely valid in right. doing that because it's their property, property paid for by the, you know, the Dutch Reformed Church, right. and they can decide who comes on property and what prayers they sing. But with That's the government... That's the problem with government schools is there is a Satanist parent out there probably who deserves that their kid that you know to have the same treatment as the thousand christian parents the, the, well right that is the issue the sort of the tragedy of the commons and of course i fully support the idea of getting rid of government schools and having only private and home schools and you know community schools people that are funding their schools through consensual means rather than through taxes but as long as government schools are going to exist then they should be places for free speech And they should be places for freedom of religion. And I'd go so far as to say that not only should they be allowed to leave pamphlets on the campus, they should be able to stand out front and hand out pamphlets. They should be able to go on the school campus, as far as I'm concerned, and hand out uh, pamphlets. Now, of course, the immediate objection is going to be terrorism. There, there's dangerous people. We can't just allow anybody on the campus. They're going to kidnap these kids. And I, I can understand the concern there. But is it public property? And if it's public property, then shouldn't the public be allowed to be on it? At the very least, as uh, after school or something like that, before school starts or after the school hours. Because you could make the argument that if it's during school, then people being on campus would be disruptive to the educational environment well, there. When I was going to public school, I don't think it would have been a problem for an adult to park in the parking lot and walk in the front door door Mm. and go to the office of the school and say, hey, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to have an appointment with the principal. You wouldn't necessarily have to have a kid there, just like, you know, I want to talk to the principal Mm -hmm. about something. But I'll bet you today that in the vast majority of schools that if you don't call ahead, you won't even get in the door. Well, I don't know about that, Mark. I mean, maybe there's some schools that are that strict, but certainly they do want you to go straight to the office when you get there. uh, You know, the way I, what I see in the news is kids walking through metal detectors. I didn't do Mm. anything like that, didn't have to deal with anything like that, and I can only imagine how schools look so similar to prisons today. To me, it almost seems like indoctrination for a life in a prison camp. So let me give you a little more background on what happened here. So the atheist group said they were censored by the school, Boone High School in Orange County, and they took it to court. The district allowed the Christian group to leave Bibles for students at 11 high schools. That led David Williamson and the Central Florida Free Thought community to leave pamphlets about atheism at the same schools. But the district wouldn't allow all of the literature because they said titles like Jesus is Dead and Why I'm Not a Muslim would cause disruption. So Williamson's group sued the district over freedom of speech. There's no censorship, said Williamson, at all taking place on the Bible, but there's censorship on our materials. WFTV found out the judge dismissed the case because the school board members changed their minds and agreed to allow all of the group's materials. Williamson's group is appealing the case and is still pending litigation. WFTV reporter Denise Broom asked, what's the point in appealing if you're getting what you want? 
Williamson uh, responds, there's no policy right now to ensure the school board won't discriminate against minority opinions. And Williamson wants that policy on the books. The school district didn't comment, of course, on how much the lawsuit is costing them. And Williamson said his group only planned to distribute their pamphlets in the same places that the Christian groups had shared their Bibles. I think that this is the right direction for this group to go in, that to continue to pursue this, to get a policy that's official, because I think they're they're absolutely right in their concern that they're going to continue to be screwed with by these bureaucrats. I uh, I hope that they continue well, to be victorious in this, because I think that if you're going to have a government school, then all viewpoints should be allowed. Well, I... I think I, I don't think there's an equality in viewpoints. I really do think that some viewpoints are better than other viewpoints. Yeah, but everybody has that opinion. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> and that's why I don't it's I don't know what I think about government schools because I think government schools are such a remarkably bad idea that pit one person against another person on so many levels. Mm -hmm. That's why I disagree with the entire concept is I shouldn't have to fight with somebody about, the religious views that should be, uh, you know, given to the school. It's the public school that creates the forum. I'm not blaming the fighters. I'm blaming the arena. Mm. I'm blaming the people that drag the fighters in there. If you didn't threaten to take my house away, you stinking thief, if mm. I don't pay you for your stinking government school, then I wouldn't have to tell you what I think is done there. Right. Please, for the love of all that is holy, leave me alone, you thieves that use the government to get what you want. Well, That's what you are. You are a band of brigands. They're using the most powerful tool of violence on the planet. Well, that's not what the defenders of the government schools would say, Mark. They would say that you consented to the tax system when you moved to the area. Which area in the United States doesn't have property taxes that pay for government schools? I don't know. Probably all of them. So are you them. claiming that I would go to some other country that they don't have where I don't speak the language? Right. I, if you don't like it, leave. I have to leave the country of my birth in order to have freedom? I thought this was the land of the free. Uh, you were wrong. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. What do you think? 855-450-3733. Freedom of speech at government schools? These days, when I'm in a relationship, I feel like I'm alone. Like there's no one behind the mask. No voice on the other end of the line. Are you looking for a car insurance policy totally devoted to you? At Geico.com, you'll find a sympathetic ear, a shoulder to cry on, butterfly kisses, and easy ways to pay your bill and manage your policy. We're waiting with bated breath to help you save money and talk about your feelings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you hundreds on car insurance. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. Good evening, Mark and Ian. Hey, it's Scott the Bigot. What's on your mind tonight, Scott? I know that America is in dire straits, and I know that the whole rotten Zionist-occupied government is going to collapse very When soon. was the last time you went out and socialized with other human beings? I, I get the pulse of the people, and I get the pulse of what's going on in this country. How can and you get the pulse very, of anything if you're cloistered within your apartment? 
I know what's going on. I mean, are you even getting out amongst other white separatists? Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. No. Wait in a minute. Is that your mom? Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Listen, it's nine o'clock. Yeah. I want it now. Yeah. No. So, gentlemen. Who, who is I, that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you go well. Wait, is I that take, your mother? <laughs> yeah, I take care of her. How old are you, by the way? 49. Is your mom as uh, bigoted and nasty towards other human beings as you are? Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you are invited here to dial toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show and sound even better than if you were on a phone. Uh, the Skype username is lrn.fm. What do you want to talk about? The government school system and how awful it is and what we could do instead. Sort of the larger topic here. Also, we were talking about the issue of freedom of speech. And freedom of religion and the ability to promote one's religion at the government schools. So whatever aspect of this you'd like to comment on, please do at 855-450-FREE. So I just recently finished a book. It's called Ant Farm. And it's a book that uh, not only do I endorse, but uh, Gary Johnson, the libertarian presidential candidate, he's in, he said it's great too. Uh, now, I loved it because it took complex issues like the military protection, judicial systems, currency, and lots more and explained them in ways that the average Joe can understand them, even young adults. And, the, you know, how they could understand how these might work in a system without government control and force. So how state intervention screws everything up. If you're tired of explaining to some of your friends how the roads could be built in a free market, hand them a copy of Ant Farm. And if you're sick of explaining to your other friends how the U.S. turned into a police state, hand them a copy of the Ant Farm, too. Stephen Aaron Gray, the author of Ant Farm, is giving away the first half of the book, the first four chapters. Agree with him or disagree with him, you have to understand that this book will give you a lot of information, and he's giving it away the first four chapters for free. Go to antfarmbook.com, read it, decide for yourself, is this something you want to buy? Because it is, I, I think, a fantastic book. It's written like Animal Farm in that same sort of prose, and it's about that same length. Antfarmbook.com. Toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. So just to give you a little bit of background here, uh, there's a decision out of a court. They've thrown out a lawsuit based on the school district in Orange County, Florida, deciding, all right, all right, all right, we'll let you atheists display your information here along with the Bible. Because apparently they've been allowing certain Christians to bring their religious propaganda into the schools and leave them out on some sort of a display. Uh, for people to take, for young people to take. And so the atheists wanted equal time. They wanted the, their ability to distribute information as well. They'd been censored by the school. And finally, the school, when pressured uh, in court, did allow them to, uh, to to put their stuff out in the schools. But the atheists are still concerned that they're going to be discriminated against. So they want an actual court ruling. That's why they're appealing the case. Would love to hear how you feel about this. I think that if you are going to have government schools, and I don't think you should, I don't think we should have government schools at all. If you are going to have them, then yeah, all viewpoints should be allowed to be represented. Would love to hear your thoughts. Gary is in Michigan. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Gary. Gary in Michigan, going once. Gary in Michigan, going twice. 
tell you what, Gary, we're going to put you on hold here. Maybe there's some technical difficulties back on the network side. Uh, but I think this is a fascinating case, and uh, now the Satanic Temple's gotten involved. I don't think we've really mentioned that aspect of it this hour, the Satanic Temple. Whether they're a real Satanic church or not, that's sort of in question. But regardless, they should be allowed to display their information. What's a real church? Well, that's a How good question. How ludicrous does somebody's thought process have to be for them to be real? You know, they, I think if you say you have a church, then you have a church. I, I, you know, they, for instance, the uh, Odinists or the Asatru, uh, you know, religion. Now, this has recently come up. I don't know what these folks believe, but I suspect that they don't believe that the Midgard serpent wraps the earth, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that they believe that at the end of the rainbow is a place called Valhalla. I just don't believe they believe that. And these are satanic beliefs? No. Oh, okay. It's just a, another religion out there. The old Thor, Odin. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I missed that. Okay. That's, that stuff. Um, and, you know, I mean, so people have revived this because maybe they want to be close to their roots. I don't know what they want. It doesn't really matter to me what it is that they, they want. But if they claim to be a religion, how, who am I to say otherwise? It's not my business. I certainly don't want anybody telling me that my – oh, sorry, you, you, not good enough. Well, Your that's religion's what's not good enough. That's what's happening to us. I mean, we've got our own church here. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't want people to think that we're Satanists. I'm not a Satanist. I'm also not an atheist, though I used to be an atheist, so I, I have some understanding from where those folks are coming from. Um, I'm a, I'm a panentheist personally, and I'm one of the ministers in the Shire Free Church, as are you, Mark. You're not a panentheist. You're a minister in the Shire Free Church. This is just an organization where people who have different spiritual beliefs can get together. It's an interfaith yeah. church, uh, sort of like the Unitarians or the ULC, the Universal Life Church. So it's not uncommon for there to be for there to be uh, you know these interfaith churches. And there are people within the government here in Keene, New Hampshire, that are saying basically that no, we don't think you're a church. You don't get tax exemption. And so now we have to go to court over this. And I think that's uh, it's awful. I think that it's insulting to smaller churches who don't have the establishment that uh, the, the Christians that have been around forever uh, do to say that, well, because you haven't been around for this long, you can't be a church. Now, they haven't said that explicitly. In fact, what they did say to us was because you're an activist, you can't have a church. And that, of course, I find to be absolutely insulting and ridiculous and outrageous. That's essentially what one of the, the tax assessors here in Keene said out loud at their tax assessment hearing, which we got on video. Now, in their actual official denial of the tax exemption status, they don't mention the reasons for denying. But this woman said that she thinks that the fact that we're activists flies in the face of our church status. Yeah. Uh, As though Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't an activist, and Daniel Webster wasn't an activist. Yeah. I mean, you know, the world's full of activist uh, preachers. The Pope is, you know, an activist priest. It's ridiculous. So let's go back. We're going to try Gary one more time. I think there were some technical difficulties there. Gary, in Michigan, uh, listening to WSJM, are you with us this time? Yes. Excellent. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yes, I hope. Uh, yeah, I was uh, wanting to call a representation of the church because the church has a uh, broad a broad, vast majority of the people that stand for what's right and the call, which is mainly that the gospel of Jesus Christ still preached throughout all the world. Huh? So, what? And, uh, Can you rephrase yeah, that? Because I'm a I, little I called, bit lost. Yeah, I, I was calling a representation of the church. Because, what church? Uh, you're going to represent the church. the church? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, what? as an individual. Which okay. church? The Church of God. Is that is a, that a specific denomination, or are you just saying that you're representing the Christian religion? Well, basically the Christian religion, because okay. they have a call from God, and it's in their spirit that they have that they feel that call. You know, and, some denominations uh, believe that other denominations are going to hell because they don't believe the same thing that um, they, you know, like. One group doesn't believe the same thing as the other group, right? Yes, sir. So but, you, how can you represent, you know, for say, instance, the Greek Orthodox and the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons and, <laughs> uh, you know, like the uh, Evangelicals and the, the Episcopals? How can you represent all of them at once? Because they believe so many different things. Because uh, you can't judge 
the Bible says, judge not unless you be judged, but you can still represent Jesus Christ. All right. Thanks for the call, Gary. Appreciate hearing from you, although I didn't really get where he was coming from. Totally confusing. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves here. Share your thoughts. Freedom of religion, government schools, or whatever's on your mind goes here on Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. No, no, no. I refuse to age. How would you like to refuse or even reverse the signs of aging? You can with a breakthrough skincare line that utilizes growth factors and plant stem cells to visibly turn back the clock. It's clinically proven and the results are stunning. Call 1-844-500-0815. 1-844-500-0815. Or visit irefusetoage.com. I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's toll-free, and it's brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. What is ProXPN, you may be asking? Well, it's a global virtual private network, and it encrypts your online data. Why does that matter? Well, your internet service provider right now is probably snooping on everything you do. It's not that they're targeting you specifically. They're doing it to all of their customers, likely. They're logging all the websites you visit, every search term you enter. Makes it easy for the government to get a hold of your information. Now, maybe you're saying to yourself, I don't do anything wrong. I don't have anything to hide. Well, what about your son or daughter or grandkids or whoever else might be sharing your internet connection? What about the creepy guy out in the van parked a few houses down who's surfing on your open Wi-Fi because you forgot to set the password on the router? All these things could get you in big trouble. And we've read news stories about people who are doing innocuous things on the internet and were you know like swept up right and nobody needs this problem so this take, is insurance take a few steps to protect your privacy pro xpn encrypts your internet connection meaning your internet service provider once you start using pro xpn your isp won't know what you're doing they won't be able to log what you're doing because they'll have no clue. It'll be encrypted data they're just passing along. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. You can get started there for free. You can try them out. No problem. Just download their software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Uh, Linux users, setup's a little bit different, but it works, and uh, it's actually pretty easy to get it started. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Now, when you're ready to upgrade to their premium package, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, and you can even privately torrent as well uh, with the ProXPN Premium deal. Now, to get that deal, use our discount code. You'll save big time. You'll save, in fact, 50% if you use code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live, the number 50. And if you want even more, that's, by the way, 50% off the price of their annual account. Breaks the price down to around $5 a month. Want to save more? Use code FTLBTC and pay with Bitcoin for the annual account and you'll save 62% off the price of that annual account. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started there. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. Codes are FTL50 or FTLBTC. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. That's proxpn.com slash FTL. We've been talking about the government school system, freedom of religion. You're welcome to comment. Let's go to Justin listening in Wichita. Justin, you're on Free Talk Live listening to KQAM. Hey, yeah, I just uh, heard one of you guys a few minutes ago reference uh, government free school system. I'm all for getting the government out of every last little bit of anything that we possibly can. Excellent. So I was just wondering if you could ex- expand uh, briefly or as long as you'd like on uh, what it is you envision when you talk about a uh, school system not ran by the government. Well, that's interesting. I mean, well, I'll, I'll give my crack at it, and then I'll let Mark uh, do that as well. I don't have a real vision for it because I don't know what the market's going to come up with. I mean, we know what we have now in alternatives to government schools. So, you know, there's uh, there's schools that are larger and smaller and there's schools that are more religious and schools that are secular and there's unschooling and there's homeschooling. And there's, so these are all sort of some of the things that exist now. We would see more competition. We'd see more innovation. We'd see prices coming down as a result of that, quality going up, and we'd see most importantly, I think, Parents and and their uh, their children being able to find an educational curriculum that is right for them without having to struggle. And Mark, you were touching on this earlier. This 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 constant conflict that goes on within the government school system, where one side wants sex education, the other side doesn't want sex education, or within the sex education, one group wants this to be taught, the other group wants this to be taught, one group wants this kind of math, the other group wants this, and it's just constantly these people are fighting at the school board and trying to get control of the system so they can implement their of you. One group wants religion to be at the schools. The other one wants the Bible out of the schools. So it just never ends. So you end the government monopoly school system, and then finally all those little interest groups can go have their own school. And if what if the school they want isn't there yet, 
they can just start one. And since nobody's being forced at that point, because there's no government schools in this fantasy land, since no one's being forced to pay for the centralized government school system, they have more money with which they can then send to the school of their choice. That's my vision for it. But Mark, what about you? Well, um, I think that a lot of people think of school, you know, they sit down. I, I think school's damaging the way we have it. The idea that you put 20 kids, 25 kids, 30 kids in a classroom, mm. sit them at uh, hard on hard plastic desks, tell them they can't go potty and that they can only run around and have a good time, but only within certain rules um, right. out at recess time and, and that kind of thing and raise your hand if you have to go to the bathroom. And that to me, what this is, is this is an indoctrination, an authoritarian indoctrination center. Sure is. Um, the idea is, is that, you know, we've got the chief in charge here at the front of the room and the rest of you little Indians do what you're told. And if you don't, um, bad things will happen. And I, I, to me, that doesn't make any sense at all. I don't think kids learn. Kids didn't evolve to learn by uh, by sitting their butts on seats. They experience the world in an entirely different way. I don't think you can create um, genius. I don't think you can create uh, creativity. I don't think you can can it, you know make something where it doesn't exist. But I'm certain that you can destroy it. Um, when it, it comes about, when nature, when it flourishes, when the flower flourishes out, you can step on it, but you can't make the flower flourish. And that's what the government school does is it steps on the vast majority of flowers out there. And I don't my son doesn't go to those kind of that kind of education. He's not going to. But, but yet you're still forced to pay for the government. School. But, but I have to pay for the school system that I believe is damaging for people. Justin, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I agree with everything both of you said. Uh, goes back to the basic principle. I think everybody will agree upon that. You know, everybody learns differently, and, and however you can flourish that and encourage that is the way you, a parent uh, sh should go about that. Uh, right. Last question or comment here. Um, uh, you know, Governor Bobby Jindal over in Louisiana is making some headlines. Their their state's doing very well with their charter school system. What do you guys think on that? Thank. I'll, we'll answer that. And thank you, Justin, for your call tonight. <sighs> The charter school system, it's just a modification of the government schools. Some charter schools do better than the government-run schools. Some of them don't. And, you know, it's just because maybe some of the, the ones that aren't doing better were hamstrung by the government regulations. Maybe they couldn't innovate in the way that they wanted to because ultimately the charter schools are just – they're sitting in, if you will, for uh, for a government school in, you know, instead. And so, I, I mean, I support having alternatives but not – forced alternatives not a not an alternative that is still run by this same monopoly under the monopolies rules and forced people are forced to pay for it so i can't support uh any kind of government school system well i i, I support competition and i believe that uh, charter schools uh, create competition in the marketplace i'm fine with that aspect what i don't support is threatening people at the pain of losing their house mm. and that's what property taxes are you don't pay property taxes uh, the property taxes are evolved from quit rents at the time that we had kings and lords and these kind of things, and you had to pay to use the lord's land. Property taxes show you that you don't own your property. You don't own it because the government owns it, and you rent it from them on an annual basis. So when you, I believe that people who paid for property under the impression that they bought property own that property, and the governments are sick, disgusting parasites mm. that, uh, you know, claim uh, claim dominion over your land. And so when you're talking about property taxes to fund other people's education, I would ask you, where was the obligation created? How was the obligation created for me to pay for your kid's schooling? And if— A social contract. Well, I'd like you to, to produce the contract. Um, it's social. Uh, well— That means we can change it at any time we want— we don't have to show you the terms because uh, we just make it up as we go along. Yeah, the terms are you do what we say or we'll, we'll take your house or we'll kill you. That's yeah, what the that's social right. contract is. That's right. Yeah, because, if you don't leave your house when they come try to take it, that's when the killing starts. Yeah, they'll, ultimately, that's what they'll do. Um, if you if you refuse to leave, you defend your house as though it is your home from armed people that wish to take it from you, you will die in that defense. We will come back with are you. Are your government schools valuable enough to kill people over? You can share your thoughts here. Toll free number 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We're here live on this Saturday edition of Free Talk Live and continue with more of your calls in moments. Share your thoughts with us here on Free Talk Live. Oh, yeah, and we've got Skype. You can Skype in a username lrn.fm. More coming up. 
drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If you need to say happy birthday, happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you, ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the field is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers, picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, go to ProFlowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's ProFlowers.com. Click the mic and enter code PLOW. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot free talk live dot com did you know that you can listen to and watch free talk live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m eastern via our studio cam at cam dot free talk live dot com not only that but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time do i need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free outside of free talk lives live hours you won't see a cam feed but we'll hear audio from the liberty radio network so listen watch and chat all free at cam dot free talk live dot com that's cam dot free talk live dot com This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, live Saturday edition. Toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we share with you. We give them away at freetalklive.com. Those other talk show hosts, 
They charge you for their websites. Most of them do. We'll give you more for free than they'll charge you for. I bet you that's true in eh, almost every case. Prove me if, uh, prove me wrong, please. Uh, go to freetalklive.com. The major feature actually allows you to create the content right there on the front page of the website. So when you go to freetalklive.com, the, the news stories, the YouTube videos, the blog posts that you see there with votes, you can vote them up, you can vote them down. Those are all put there by listeners like you. In fact, each story is attributed to uh, to various different listeners. Top story right now, uh, by Snowdog2012, mandatory lockdown by the state, much better game theory than an anarchist plague genocide. What? S- second story, <laughs> Stupid Moron submitted this one. Four reasons legalized weed is proving to be a total bummer from Cracked. Dot com. So all kinds of neat stuff there. And it was put there by listeners like you. Go there and get interactive at freetalklive.com and enjoy. So we're going to continue with your calls and thoughts. Let's go to the phones and the fun. Let's go to Katie in Vegas. Katie, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. Hi. How are you guys? Hey, you're on the air. I'm on the air. Can you hear me? Yes, go. Okay. Well, um, I just wanted to mention, I was listening to your guys' show while driving, and um, my opinion is that, to be honest, yes, they should, you know, whether you're an atheist or you believe in say, satanic rituals or whatever that be, then if it's a public place, they should be able to hand out their pa- pamphlets. Um, I do not advocate it, but if that's the case, yes. Um, Should they be able to go on a school campus and hand them out? Um, yeah, I mean, if they do, if they can do it in colleges, I mean, I'm not actually, you know, 100% positive, but I know they hand out certain other things and even put things on bulletins, such as looking for roommates or whatever. What it doesn't matter what the content is they should be able to do it. Well, many colleges have uh, rules and restrictions on free speech on campus. In fact, I've been banned from the college campus with a no trespass order here. Now, that one was a one-year-long ban for handing out flyers about a 420 celebration a couple of years ago. When my attorney contacted the college, all of a sudden they rescinded that no trespass order. So I suspect that they knew they were in the wrong on that particular case. But that won't stop them from threatening you if you do go on to a college campus, for instance. Now, traditionally, colleges have been more of a kind of free speech zone, but that won't stop a a college uh, security agent from telling you you can't be there or that you've got to go and get some sort of permission slip from the college. I love how high school students who are 18 years old are somehow incapable of understanding important uh, radical ideas that might be different than what their parents teach, but college students who are 18 years old, a couple of, a few months later, somehow are wide open and ready to accept these ideas. that's not the argument, Mark. No one's ever made the argument that the high schoolers are incapable. The argument is that you're just not allowed to come on campus because terrorism. Or What about colleges? What about terrorism in colleges? Yeah. Well, just because, you know, they say you can't doesn't, you know, there's a difference between you can and can't. You know, they're telling you you can't, but the reality, the reality is, yes, they, they can, whether it's my opinion or not. You're absolutely right about that, Katie. Thanks for the call tonight. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. So, yeah, I totally agree with where she's coming from. This is kind of the way it works, though, with bureaucrats, right? And usually at these colleges, you're still dealing with bureaucrats. They're still state-funded schools, and so ultimately, even though they may have a little more autonomy. The answer to everything when dealing with a government bureaucracy is no until it's yes. And or you can't do that. For instance, I don't ask permission. I've never asked permission to go on a college campus and hand information out, ever. And I'm not going to because I believe I have a right to free speech. And if I'm on government property, government-funded property, then I should have a right to be there and engage in my free speech. But that doesn't stop them from coming up to you and attempting to intimidate you. And if you don't know your rights, and if you're not willing to stand on your rights, then the first time a security agent comes up and says, Hey, you can't hand those out here. Hey, you need to get a permission slip for that. Come with me. And then, you know, they take you up to the office, and then, then that's when they show you all this paperwork. And I've been there. I've been to the office, and I've seen their paperwork. Uh, and I don't care about it. I'm not interested in following their rules. It, like, for instance, here at Keene State College, they want you to fill out this paperwork and beg for permission. And then once you fill out the paperwork, it's not like they're going to let you go out and hand things out. The rules and restrictions on the paperwork say that you're only allowed to come to the school once a month or twice a month max. You can set up a table. They'll provide the table. 
you set up a table in the student center, and you can sit behind the table, and you cannot call out to anyone walking by. Now, that basically neuters any uh, effectiveness that you have at doing any kind of getting information into people's hands. Because if you just have to sit quietly behind the table, you can stay all day, but <laughs> you have to sit quietly behind the table until someone comes up and approaches you. Well, I'm sorry. That's just not effective. I want to get information into people's hands. I'm not going to do that. So even if I wanted to ask permission, the, the rules would be unacceptable uh, to me. And so I have ever since then, you know, I just continue to hand things out and they've left me alone. Uh, right. and, and, well, they're certainly not going to change your mind. Well, right. And <laughs> they they don't want to apparently, you know, issue me another no trespass order because they don't want to go to court on that that issue and possibly lose. Because it's more effective for them to just continue threatening people who don't know their rights. Yeah. It absolutely is, because this way, you know, if if you if they take you to court and you win, then they have to basically let a hundred percent of people who are you know nutty folks who have uh, opinions like you on the campus. That's a hundred percent. Right. In this case, they can keep ninety nine percent off and just let you do whatever you want because, well, yes. you know, you're the dog off the leash. Because the ninety nine percent of the people who w who would get it into their head, most people won't have the you know the the brazenness to go on a campus and do something like this but of those who do get it in their head that they want to go hand out stuff most of them will be turned away by a simple threat from a security agent oh i can't be here oh i'm sorry i'll leave oh i need to fill out the form all right give me the forms okay i'll do whatever you tell me that's not standing on your rights that's not exercising your rights if you want to have rights you have to exercise them and frequently that means facing down the police or in this case security agents who will call the police on you and that's what I do. 855 450 free. In fact, that's what a lot of us do here in New Hampshire, where we have an, a movement of people. In fact, I, I meant to mention this to a caller earlier who was really interested in the idea of not having government run schools in the first place. Look, wherever it is you are in the United States or whatever country internationally, Odds are good government schools are there to stay, and they're there, there to stay for a long time. And I think that here in New Hampshire, they're probably going to be staying around for a long time, too. But the idea that we've got here is to move people to New Hampshire, as we did, Mark. You and I are from Florida originally. Move people to New Hampshire as part of what's called the Free State Project. People who love liberty, not just any people but people who understand what freedom really means. Not just people who want educational freedom, but people who want freedom across the board. People who get that in order to have freedom at some day in the future, uh, in order to have freedom, we have to allow other people to have freedom too, which means allowing people who have different ideas than ours to have freedom for themselves. If you're willing to let people be free and you understand what liberty is all about, Go to freestateproject.org. I can't encourage you firmly enough to do this. I think it's the most important movement we've seen in our lifetimes. It's working. We've got over 1,600 people here now in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Over 16,000 people have signed on as participants in the Free State Project. These are people who've pledged, as we did, to make the move to New Hampshire and get active to achieve as much liberty in our lifetime as humanly possible. Absolutely, because people sitting around talking about the ideas of liberty wherever they are or trying to work within the Libertarian Party or whatever where they are, they tried that for decades. Mm -hmm. It hasn't worked. Something else has to be tried. Yes, I know, picking up your life and moving across the That's country, tough. It's, it's a commitment. There's no doubt about it. I know because I did it. I yeah. know because, uh, you know, I made that same commitment and so have at this point about 1,600, maybe seven, somewhere in 1,600, 1,700 people have done the same thing. Don't think you're alone. There are people that are committed like you. That's what we need. We need people who uh, are committed to the ideas of liberty. Go check it out. Freestateproject.org. There's also a great 101 reasons to move to New Hampshire there. And uh, let's continue with your calls. 855-450-FREE. Glenn is in Virginia listening to WNIS in Norfolk. Hey, Glenn. Yeah, I like that uh, government schools because that's exactly what I'm living uh, in the midst of. What do you mean? York County, Virginia, USA, nothing but military dependents go to all the schools in eastern Virginia, paid to go, paid, ride brand new school buses paid for by the taxpayers, and all of this military is poor taxpayers. They have Washington State, Oregon, and anywhere that has a free property tax for them. 
but yet they go to my school. So you're saying your property taxes are paying for military brats to go to school? Amen. Over 90 percent in my next door high school is military. Glenn, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate it. There's more coming up. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Is gun ownership about target shooting, hunting, and self-defense, or is there more to it? Oath Keepers and Brayburn Entertainment present Molon Labe, inspired by the works of Edwin Vieira Jr., explains why we need to revitalize the state militia system. Featuring Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Larry Pratt, and Stuart Rhodes. Available on DVD at moviepubs.net, oathkeepers.org, and gunowners.org. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,219, silver opened at $18.36, and Bitcoin is trading around $393. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch is reporting that the Ferguson police officer behind the shooting death of 18-year-old Michael Brown testified in front of a grand jury on Wednesday. The Post-Dispatch stated that Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson spoke for four hours in front of the seven men and five women on the grand jury. Wilson was reportedly cooperative with St. Louis County and federal investigators. The grand jury has been expected to make a decision on whether or not to charge Wilson by mid-October. Earlier this week, CNN reported that St. Louis County Judge Carolyn Whittington had extended the grand jury's deadline until January 7th. It started with a wellness check. It ended with a four-hour standoff between police and a man who allegedly wanted to kill himself. Jose Silva posted live images of the SWAT team pointing guns at his car to the social media site Whisper. Silva recently broke up with his girlfriend. It was she who initially called law enforcement and indicated he may be armed and was making suicidal statements. Hours later, he was clock driving his car over 100 miles per hour, and the standoff began. After spraying chemicals into his car to induce nausea, the police arrested him and took him into custody, where he'll spend 72 hours for psychiatric evaluation. No weapons were found. The fire chief garrison of Reno, Nevada, is warning residents to be very aware and very vigilant in response to a recent rise in fires caused by so-called smart meters. The new electric meters send energy use data electronically to electric companies, reducing the need for an in-person meter read. Of the nine fires in the area that appear to be linked to smart meters, one resulted in death. Nevada Electric reports over 70 consumed meters, meaning the cover is melted or breached and soot can be present. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin 
at 500 East Benway Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBobs.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. Activists with the Detroit Water Brigade are calling on Detroit citizens to join in the Occupy the Bankruptcy campaign to fight the controversial water shutoffs taking place in the city. The plan calls for a meeting Monday at 8.30 in the morning on the steps of a federal courthouse for a speak-out with families facing water shutoffs. The group is demanding that U.S. Judge Stephen Rhodes immediately stop the shutoff program and create an income-based water affordability plan. Former drone intelligence analyst Heather Linebaugh has begun speaking out in support of alternative treatment methods for post-traumatic stress disorder for veterans. I use yoga a lot. I practice transcendental meditation, and I was actually part of a case study that studying the effects of relaxation massage on people with PTSD and actually studied my sleep patterns when I was able to sleep longer after I got massaged and my mood patterns, like how my mood was while I was in the program getting massage regularly. I used medicinal marijuana for quite some time to sleep at night. Linebaugh served in the United States Air Force from 2009 until March of 2012 as an imagery analyst and geospatial analyst for the drone program during the occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan. A new study suggests that veterans dealing with PTSD may benefit from breathing-based meditation treatment. Researchers with the University of Wisconsin-Madison published the study in the Journal of Traumatic Stress. Chartered psychologist Dr. Kate Sparks with the British Psychological Society said the study showed how breathing is radically affected by how a person is feeling and that deeper, fuller breaths can help manage PTSD symptoms. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM, located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 19, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan, reporting. The members of Twisted Sister announced they are now willing to take it. A local man is seated next to Lou Reed on a roller coaster, and in retrospect, a band teacher was probably gay. And now a digitally remastered recap of the summer's music news. Baby Baby Love Ya Girl is now the nation's number one song, despite no one claiming credit for singing, writing, or producing it. Here now is a short excerpt of the track. Baby Baby Love Ya Girl Baby Baby Love Ya Girl baby, baby. Members of the music industry call the hit single the most creatively braindead wasteland in modern recording history. And they say they would gladly lose millions in royalties rather than face the shame of having been involved in it. After a slap bass filibuster from rubber band minority leader Bootsy Collins, the National Funk Congress remains deadlocked over the controversial get up, get down issue. Proponents of the measure favor getting on up and staying on the scene like a sex machine, while detractors are vehement in their belief that Americans need to get down. Get down with their bad selves. <laughs> this is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the live Saturday edition. We'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. The conversation tonight has gone from uh, the Satanic Temple giving out pamphlets at government schools in Orange County, Florida, uh, to just a general conversation about government schools, to whatever you want to discuss. You dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And just the idea of... Who should be allowed to give out information at a government school? Of course, the idea, ideal situation for the hosts of the show would be that we have no government schools. And so we were also talking about a, a world in which uh, those things don't exist anymore. And we actually have a marketplace of schools where people can send their children to whatever school they choose. And they're not forced by the threat of violence to fund a school system that they don't agree with, which is what we've got today. I don't agree with the government schools. I don't want anything to do with them. I don't even have kids. Now, that doesn't mean I don't support education. Uh, for instance, the Shire Free Church, Mark, uh, you and I are involved with the Shire Free Church as ministers here in Keene. Right. Uh, Shire Free Church actually gave money to the Waldorf School here in town. 
uh, because I, th I support education. I just want to support the education that I support, not the stuff I don't. Simple. Makes sense. But yet we're all threatened with the violence of the stealing of our homes if we don't pay in to this government school system. So you can comment on any of those things, 855-450-FREE. You can also bring up whatever's on your mind, 855-450-3733. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Uh, we've got Jay on the line here. Jay, you're on Free Talk Live in Colorado. Hey, guys. Hey, Jay. Uh, as you know, uh, well, a couple second, segments ago, Mark posed the question, uh, what is the agreement you know, to uh, participate in this tax scheme. Well, it's not exactly what he said, but essentially what he, I think he said. He said, what was and, the obligation? Uh, what was the obligation? Obligation, yep. So uh, in, um, I have literally, for the past decade, been asking this question. I've asked it to tax collectors in writing. Of course, they don't answer. And then I did a public records request back in 2010. For them to provide the documents that that, that the town really relies on, um, that I have consented to agreeing to participate in a property tax, and what they sent me back was the deed that the guy who sold me the house signed doesn't have my signature on it. Mm -hmm. They sent me the deed that he's a grantor on, uh, uh, a grantee on. A grantee is a guy who buys a house, and then they sent me the deed that. All the, they sent me back like the last like seven deeds, certified copies of them, and that was all. And that was their answer to my public records request for, you know, the agreement. And, Did the um, deed contain any stipulations about paying property taxes? In fact, well, and it's not property taxes; it's real estate tax. And in fact, none of these deeds say the word real estate on them. They mm -hmm. all say a tract of land. So no, it, there was no stipulation, and and I you never, didn't sign didn't it sign anyway. Deed. So now, when my father was in court on a, on the farm thing, he he asked in every possible way we could conceive asking, where's the agreement? What's the agreement? And in fact, for about I got the transcripts, uh, the recordings for maybe he asked the question. I think we counted 27 times in a row. Where is the instrument I sub I sign that compels me to this purpose? Now, An instrument, by the I, way, is a legalese term that means a contract, basically, an agreement of some sort, something you'd sign. Right. So in 1991, my father did this when they brought him to court, because he bought that land in 1983. And uh, they, um, the judge told the town, you have 30 days to provide said instrument. And and at the next court date, the town attorney never never appeared, and they, took, they actually— they removed the tax liens from the property in 1991, and then in 2012, wow. I think it was 2012, 2011, I don't know the dates, we were in Boston at Land Court, and we asked it in writing. We did a motion demanding it. We did public records requests. We did freedom of information. We did, like, every conceivable thing to, like, cover every basis. So finally, the town's attorney says, interestingly noted, I have right here a deed where Mr. Noon agrees to pay the property taxes now, or pay the real estate tax. Now, the deed doesn't say that, and we objected up and down, and that's actually one of the reasons that I'm suing the, uh, the town's lawyer in, in uh, Landcourt because he uh, misled the court um, and, and lied. And uh, so anyways, that, that's all in appeal, federal appeals court right now. But recently— for about, oh, the past three months, I've probably been spending literally 25 to 30 hours a week on conference calls, doing research on where this agreement lies. And I was on, I've been on the phone the past couple of days with people about this. And what, what our theory is, and the reason I'm calling it a theory is because I haven't put everything together to prove it yet. I shouldn't say I, the, the people and I have been working on this. And the theory is, is that when you register the deed in the registry of deeds, you uh, abandon the deed, and the, um, the the registry of deeds is essentially like a bank. You're basically it's like you're depositing a check, but not withdrawing the cash when you register a deed. Is is what our research is leading to now. And so, are you claiming that if when you register a deed with the town, that you're essentially giving the town the property? Is that the idea? Well, what, what you're 
you're doing is you're putting your yes, you're giving it, you're putting the property into trust. The town is putting it into trust. You, in this trust, uh, are become the trustee, and the town becomes the executor and the beneficiary. Uh, hence, all of this stuff with permits and taxation, and you having to bear. How do you the get burden. it back out? Well, this is exactly what um uh and uh the girl who helps you her mother and i are working on this very di- diligently and it's actually being tested this week we did uh a notice of removal from county registry of the property and that uh, it was being transferred out of any implied um trust estate corporation anything that they could possibly come up with and it was no longer for public consumption because everything that's put into the into, into the public arena is for public consumption um, from what our research has found. So you filed and, a uh, notice with who? Right. The, count, the county recorder? Yes, the county registry of deeds. And, um, and so that's just been filed? Well, it's... If it hasn't been filed yesterday, it'll be filed Monday. Fascinating. Uh, I, and and now what, the, I guess another question would be, how do you avoid putting the deed in there in the first place? Isn't it the title company that does all that? I've never gone down and filed a deed. I, that's something I've never done. Well, well, here's part of the fraud about it. Now, my dad specifically was smart enough in 1983 not to register the deed. So the people who owned my dad's land kept on getting this tax bill. So what them people did is they said, hey, Spud, you got to put this deed in. And he says, no, I'm not doing it. I, I got the deed in a safe spot. It's my property. I'm not give, I'm not giving it to the town. And my dad was part of this, you know, free man stuff, you know, in the, since the 70s. So anyways, they ended up, um, the people who own, who, who formerly owned the property, their lawyer actually, re, actually recorded the deed like two or three years after the property was, um, uh, like, you know, Purchased, full transfer. Yeah. So, and it shows that right on the deed. The date is, I don't remember the exact amount of years, but it was a significant time after the property was, the deed was written and notarized and all that, and and uh, that it was recorded in the registry of deeds. And that's actually when the, um, they went back like, they went like five or six years the first time around, you know, before they came after my dad on the property tax. You'll have to keep uh, us in the loop, Jay. I think it's fascinating, and if you're able to actually pull the deed from the county registry, that'll be a huge uh, victory. I I don't know what's going to happen with that, so uh, let us know when you know, and thank you for the info tonight. That's Jay Noon. This the, Jay is a guy, for listeners who are new to the show or have never heard Jay before, He's a, and we could have kept him on the whole hour, uh, but uh, he, he's a guy who actually puts his beliefs into action. Now, he's not always right, uh, and or sometimes he might believe he's right, but the government doesn't do what he's expecting right. them to. He's not always successful, yeah. I think is probably better. But he's someone who actually put his own house on the line and ultimately lost it uh, in, you know, a, a, in this sort of property tax fight, if you will. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Is he on to something? We'll find out over time here as the case continues to develop. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. You bring up anything. A powerful weight loss supplement is being given out to listeners in this area on a strict first-come, first-served basis. You must be between the ages of 25 and 65 and need to lose at least 30 pounds. Please call now only if you qualify. 1-800-409-5432. This product can cause dramatic weight loss, so supplies are limited. It's called Final Trim. Take two capsules just once a day as directed, and you can experience maximum weight loss, pounds in days. It uses natural ingredients, making it healthy and safe. If your weight loss with Final Trim is too dramatic, please decrease use and only take one capsule a day. Call now, and you will be given a full-size supply of Final Trim to use absolutely risk-free. Repeat. Final Trim is being given out to listeners on a strict first-come, first-served basis. Supplies are limited. Call 1-800-409-5432. 1-800-409-5432. That toll-free number again is 1-800-409-5432. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. 
Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, live Saturday edition, toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You know, we were talking earlier about the Free State Project, the idea of moving liberty-oriented people all to the same place. There are over 16,000 participants in the Free State Project. One of them is a man named Andrew Jones, and Andrew right now is unable to move to New Hampshire. He's unable to fulfill his, uh, his pledge as part of the Free State Project, and that is because he's on house arrest, on bail conditions, on a million dollars bond from the federal government's clutches because they're accusing him of being one of the operators of the Silk Road underground drug black marketplace. And he's now facing the rest of his life in prison as a result of these charges. He uh, has his parents who have put up their retirement incomes and their home in order to secure this million dollar bond. They don't have much left They need as much help as possible to pay for his defense because Drew didn't hurt anybody. Even if he did administer the Silk Road, the Silk Road helped save lives. Right. Silk Road's an amazing technology. We don't have time to get into the details on the Silk Road. You can do your own research on that, and you can do your own research on Andrew Jones. But there's not much information out there about Andrew. There's a lot about Ross Ulbricht, who is the the guy accused of being the head of the Silk Road. But Drew's facing very similar charges. He just hasn't gotten the same amount of attention. If you want to help out Ross, you can do that at freeross.org. We support that here on Free Talk Live. We also support helping out Drew at drewsdefense.org. That's drewsdefense.org. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, let's go to Ernie listening in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Ernie. Well, finally, it was great listening to you guys. It's the first time I've heard you, and I'm very uh, 
impressed by the common sense. Welcome, sir. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. I wanted to say that I read an article in Outside Magazine. It spoke about, well, the title of it was We Don't Need No Education. And it talked about bringing common sense and uh, usefulness into the schoolrooms. And I think there's examples of things that already exist that are successful. You know, we can identify the problems, but if you're not part of the solution, you may be continuing the problem. If you look in communities such as Shenandoah Valley in Virginia, the Mennonite communities, they um, certainly have uh, uh, educational curriculum that are state-imposed, and they follow that. And on one blackboard I read, because I walked around and I lived in the community for a long time, and it became very friendly with their approach. They have the state-required teaching on one blackboard, and then on the other board it talks about things like what is a thunderhead, how does it impact the crops. They take kids out and they teach them about the harvest. They teach them how to build. They, it's an incredible life, and they, I believe, pay very little, if any, taxes at all because they're, a, they're part of the solution. They're an individual group who make their own foods, furniture, clothing, and very, very uh, little dependency on government, if, if any. So I think there's an example of a realistic approach and solution to the problems that you've identified tonight. And, uh, and I want people to understand that there's a, you know, there's, a, there's a happy ending here. It's not all about the problems. It is, in fact, to identify those universal, acceptable means of education that exist probably more than we realize. I'll be up in New Hampshire uh, next week from the 29th through the 4th of the training program. And I'm very interested in hearing a little bit more about uh, your initiatives. I just wanted to say that, and I'll get off the phone if you guys want to comment, that here's an example that exists in America, the land of the free, where children are educated, they're being introduced to the wild. In fact, the article in Outside Mag Magazine has as a subtitle, uh, Rewilding Our Children, hmm. where they get them out of those penitentiaries and put them back on the farms and, and into realistic uh, examples of how, what they're going to need to survive in life. Now, did you say the school was Mennonite or Amish? Uh, Mennonite. I, I lived in the Shenandoah Valley, Virginia, mm -hmm. in a beautiful part of the world, and uh, it was in the town of Mount Clinton and Hinton and those areas in Rockingham County, Virginia. So, uh, we Just so you know, Amish are Mennonites, Ian. Yeah, but the Mennonites are a little more a little more with it with the times, right? Like they've got cars. Depends on the Mennonites, no. Uh, no? No. No? no. I, I What's the difference? The I think just the opposite. They're so really? independent that, uh, again, we're reliant on government and, and the lack thereof, and these people are definitely on their own, providing education that makes sense to their community, and I'm sure we could benefit and learn something uh you know, you know, for so, example. So is the idea, Ernie, that they, uh, when they, you, you mentioned this blackboard with the state educational curriculum, is that is that sort of the idea that they're complying with the state's rules by yes. just having it there, but they just ignore Absolutely. it, essentially? Well, That's they fascinating. They, 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 they need it because they find out the areas in which it's important. Now, let me give you a quick example. I, I walked into the school system. It was run by a friend's family member. And I walked in. I said, what are these little flags on each uh uh, classroom. There might have been seven or eight kids in each class. And they said, well, we believe that instead of raising the hand and the kid stopping his reading or her reading and losing the attention and the momentum uh, that is provided, they put the flag up when they have a question about something that they're reading. And then by the time we get to the opportunity to put that flag down and answer that question or, 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 or you know, or, or, or deal with it, they generally have read far enough and kind of figured it out on their own. They give the kids a chance to think. Ernie, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Anything you That's can do. That's 855 Thank you. Anything you can do to get your kids out of the government schools is something I support. Uh, even though I don't support having these government rules on private schools or homeschooling, uh, education, uh, you know, or unschooling. I don't think you should have to show any bureaucrat how you're educating your children. I don't think you should have to beg uh, for permission or beg for approval or anything like that. But I understand that people are scared. You know, they go through, they jump through the hoops because they're afraid the government's going to take their kids from them. I can understand why people do that. The suggestion is that um, somehow the state is an organization that is uh, that can hold other people accountable, and I, I really, I, I question that. What qualifies these people to hold me accountable on the education of my child? They went to college. Okay, that's fine. So did you know a variety of other people They're who trained run on other... how to be teachers. You're says, not. Says them. 
You're they not. say to themselves that they are qualified. I say to myself, I am qualified. You're just a talk show host. You are not professionally trained as a teacher. You need to have a teacher hold your hand, Mark, and tell you how it's done. Well, a teacher would know that it, when you think about organizations that claim a monopoly privilege over the use of violence in a given landmass, known as states, these organizations that we commonly call governments, but I, I, I think that they're special in that they, uh, they govern in a monopolistic way. These organizations are responsible for more human deaths in the 20th century than any other single cause, and that therefore it is wise for an individual not to trust people who work for that organization, even if those people seem, you know, old and pleasant and female, and maybe they, you know, they, they, they talk really quiet and perhaps a little condescendingly to you, like they did when you were in school. You know, let's not forget, you work for an organization of violence, and you'll take my house away. You'll take your kids too. If I don't play, and they'll take your kids too. So what? Wait, okay. Clarify for me. What's sure. the difference between the Amish and the Mennonites? I thought sure. the Mennonites, because we used to live in Sarasota, Florida. There's a large Mennonite community there. At least what I thought was a Pinecraft. Mennonite. Pinecraft for the win. Uh, what's the difference? Um, Mennonites span a much larger gamut than Amish do. Uh -huh. Amish tend to be, uh, you know, conservative. Mennonites can be anywhere from ultra conservative, more conservative than uh, Amish, to huh. quite liberal. Where you Fascinating. Know, the married guys don't even have beards anymore. Okay. I uh, always thought the, the Mennonites cars were the more open, way. more free. I, that's interesting. So there's a, common, there's a wider range. Common mistake. Yeah. All right. More coming up here in moments. You can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Andrew Michael Jones is a liberty-loving activist and participant in the Free State Project. He's also been accused of being one of the administrators of the infamous Silk Road anonymous black marketplace. Andrew is facing a federal trial for multiple crimes with no victim. Whether or not he's the Silk Road administrator named Inigo, he has not been accused of harming anyone. In fact, the Silk Road is actually an amazing advancement that has reduced the overall harm of the black market to both customers and drug sellers. Whether or not he did it, Andrew, like alleged Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht deserves the support of people who love liberty. Visit DrewsDefense.org to learn more and contribute to his defense. You can donate via PayPal or in Bitcoin, as I did. That's DrewsDefense.org. Drew's family does not have much, and his parents have put up their home and both retirement incomes to secure a $1 million bond on Andrew. He's currently on 24-7 house arrest and is prohibited from touching any device that could connect to the Internet. Please contribute to his defense fund via DrewsDefense.org. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. According to locals waiting for a 66 bus in downtown Chicago last night, a young couple was making out in the passenger shelter like they were in f***ing. 
in Paris or something. Onlookers spoke to reporters about the pair, who carried on their passionate embrace for over 20 minutes, as if they were in some sort of goddamn candlelit bistro tucked away in Montmartre. It's been almost a half an hour and they're still going at it. It's like they think they're sitting on a sun-dappled picnic blanket in the Tuileries Gardens. I mean, where the hell are we? The Champs-Élysées? The Paris Marathon makeout session, which took place in downtown Chicago and not, as frustrated onlookers emphasized, on a cobblestone street in the city of f***ing lights, featured intense gazing, deep tongue kissing, and other gestures of affection typically reserved for a couple strolling down the banks of the Seine River. You know, for a second there, I honestly thought we had all been transported to Parc Monceau drinking flutes of champagne on a wonderful summer afternoon while being serenaded by a Parisian accordion player. But no, we're at a bus stop in in Chicago. This is the Onion News Network. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free at 855-453-855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you there. Uh, we give them away. So, again, freetalklive.com. We'll get back into your calls here in a moment. You can call in about anything. We've been all over the place from uh, government schools to freedom of speech, people being able to go and hand things out to government school students. The idea of what would the world be like without having a monopoly on schools as we have with the government system, etc. You can also take control here via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Send a contact request. It will be approved after that. It's easy to call us on Skype. And if you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into Modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall, so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about how Modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work and giving them that critical edge that they need. They at modup.net make it affordable for you to take advantage of the benefits of modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower in price than the brand name. But don't mistake low prices for inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency are consistent to that of the branded version. And remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net gives you a deep discount if you pay with Bitcoin. Now, their prices are already great, but you save 33% if you pay with Bitcoin at modup.net. Now, you can also use code FTL to make the deal even better by getting 10 free tablets with your order. So don't forget code FTL, like Free Talk Live, at modup.net. It's world-class service at a great price for modafinil. Modup, M-O-D-U-P, dot net. And again, code FTL. Uh, before we continue here, Mark, you had described the difference between Mennonite and Amish, and it wasn't in the way that I have traditionally understood it, it's also not in the way that uh, thirdway.com, which is the uh, first result, the Third Way Cafe, it's the first result when you search for uh, Mennonite versus Amish on Google. The article here is, who are the Mennonites? Frequently asked questions about Mennonites. What's the difference between Mennonites and Amish? We find that many people asking about Mennonites are actually thinking of the Amish or Old Order Mennonites. So maybe that's what you meant when you were talking about how Mennonites, there's this large range of them. Some of them very conservative. Some are very, very you know liberal in, in their ways. The conservative ones being like, let's live without power, that kind right. of group. Would that be the Old Order that I would Absolutely. guess? Absolutely. Okay. So Mennonites and Amish, they say here, come from a Protestant tradition known as Anabaptism meaning to be baptized again, begun in the 16th century. The first Anabaptists separated from the state church because of their belief that a relationship with Christ is an adult choice and baptism must come out of an adult decision to follow Christ in every aspect of life. At that time, infant baptism was the accepted practice. Besides their common historical roots, Mennonite and Amish groups all stress that they should live out their beliefs in daily life. While the groups agree on basic Christian doctrine, their differences come in interpreting how those practices should be lived out. The original difference in opinion came in 1693 when Jacob Amen 
a Swiss Anabaptist leader, felt that the church leaders were not holding to strict separation from the world and that a spiritual renewal was needed. Amen didn't believe that the ban or shunning was being practiced as it should be. He separated from the Anabaptists over this issue, and his followers were nicknamed Amish, presumably, I would guess, after his last name. Right. Amen enforced more separatist ways upon his followers, and today some practices among the Amish include untrimmed beards and hooks and eyes in the place of buttons on outer garments of the men, horse and buggy transportation, horse-drawn implements for farming, plain and distinctive dress patterns, and no electricity in homes. However, most Mennonites today are not outwardly that different from any person you meet on the street, and in fact, live in countries around the world with a wide variety of ethnic backgrounds. Mennonites believe in simple living, but express that simplicity in a spirit of stewardship and awareness of the needs of others, rather than completely separating from society, as the Amish continue to do. Yeah, I think that um, you know some you'll find some Mennonite communities where they use plain dress, and you'll mm-hmm. find other Mennonite communities where they don't. Interesting. And they might not even have a community at that point. They just kind of you know go out and live their lives. But uh, it just you know it depends on the church and what their prescribed rules are. These Anabaptist church they churches they have they're, they're formed from the bottom up. There is no you know Mennonite. Pope, mm, right, right. <laughs> P- passing down the Mennonite rules. Good um, for them. Well, it's it, so many churches are uh, aligned that way. Quakers are the decentralized. Same. Indeed. So I've always found the Amish to be fascinating. I mean, as far as, and I guess the Mennonites to a lesser extent, but you know, the Amish, where they, in a lot of cases, will get in conflict with the government because the government's rules require this and this and this, and the Amish are like, that's against our religion, man. So they just don't do it. and They have lobbyists. Really? Yes. The Amish don't have to pay Social Security and it's because they're Amish lobbyists. Well, I don't pay Social Security either, and well, I'm not Amish. Okay. The Amish, is, <laughs> the Amish have a dispensation, whereas, um, you know, trying to get out of— If you pay taxes, mm. um, if you pay income taxes, you're going to pay Social Security taxes. Do Amish pay income taxes? No. They have—yes, they have lobbyists um, that allow them to— not pay Social Security because they're Amish. So they pay the income tax, but not the Social Security. That's correct. Hmm. So you can share your thoughts here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Kristen in Massachusetts. You're on Free Talk Live. Kristen. Hey. Hey. How, how you doing? Hey. What's on your mind? It's funny that you're talking about intercourse, uh, uh, Pencil. There's an, a town called Intercourse, Pennsylvania, where it's— um, Screw them. You know, the Amos, <laughs> Amish country, and I've been there. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> but exciting. Anyways, um, I was, uh, I just wanted to comment on Jay Noon, Jay, sure. Jay Noon's uh, uh, thing about the property tax. Yeah, the, Jay's, uh, for our listeners just tuning in, Jay's a, a hero of mine. He actually put his own property on the line in a, in a heroic stand against property tax and ultimately lost it in uh, Palmer, Massachusetts. Go ahead. Yes, that's what, that's. When I met you first, Ian. Mm-hmm. But, anyways, um, you know, uh, I've I've been in Massachusetts. Um, I, I have my had my house right now for like 30 years, and you know, so what's going to happen after 30 years? So, I'm paying my property tax, and I've owned the house 30 years, so I still have to pay tax on my land that's ridiculous it never ends and i probably shouldn't i should never have actually paid for my tax the whole time well you know the the government uh, whatever that municipal government is that collects your taxes they've been collecting money on that land non-stop Forever. for hundreds of years if you didn't they pay, don't care right. who owns it because you're just a renter there as right. far as they're concerned I mean, if you didn't pay the tax Kristen, you'd have no roof over your head at some point because they'd do the same thing they did to exactly. uh, jay noon they'd come with a team yeah. of men with guns and they'd throw you out into the street and they wouldn't care if it was in the middle of january in uh, in massachusetts you know as uh, since you happened to call in, Kristen, and and we have met in person, you is, you is were at Keen, you were at Keenvention last year, and I hear you're coming back this yes, year. Yes, I was. <laughs> and and you're coming back I can't this year, wait right? To co- I, yes, and I'm bringing a lot of people from Rhode Island. Awesome. And uh, I'm I'm bringing people from uh, Boston. What did you like the uh, most about Keenvention? Last year. Yeah. Last year, um, what I lo- what I loved the best was um, the welcoming at the welcoming atmosphere, because I went all by myself. Mm-hmm. I did not really know a lot of you guys. 
Um, and I just love the welcoming attitude. And cool. plus, I won a lot of prizes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll look forward to seeing you in a few weeks at uh, Keenvention 2014. Yeah. Thanks for the call tonight, Kristen. Appreciate hearing no, wait, from wait. you. No, no, I wanted to talk about women and guns r- women and guns rights, but I'll call another yeah, night. Yeah, another night, night. Another night. Thanks for the call tonight. You can call any night here on Free Talk Live. We only have a one call per night rule. There aren't very many rules here on Free Talk Live, as it should be. Uh, but yeah, look forward to hearing from her again. And Keenvention, I'll tell you a little bit more about that coming up here in moments. I'm excited about it. We're gearing up for it here in Keene. It's coming up uh, October 31st through November 2nd. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Keenvention.info is the website. Our toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. We can talk about government schools, the Amish, whatever's on your mind goes here on Free Talk Live's Live Saturday edition. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You take control. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Is your money manager giving you safety and security? Wouldn't you like to make your money work harder for you? Then you should consider joining PhilzGang.com, where thousands of individual investors have successfully profited. This year I'm up 60% on my portfolio. Following your system has been fantastic. I've been with you for about a month and a half now, and I'm already up 7%. I've been in the business for a long time, and you're really one of the best I've ever heard. Well, I just want to let you know how great, what a great teacher you are. For over a decade, Philsgang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell have been teaching, coaching, and investing right along with all Phil's Gang members. I want to thank Donnie for market wrap. I bought 2,500 shares of AUI and sold it this morning at $820 profit. Why not join thousands of satisfied Phil's Gang customers today? Go to philsgang.com, philsgang.com, or call 877-600-4264. That's 877-600-4264. Call today. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. 
If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain here in this live Saturday edition of the program. But there's still plenty of time for you to get on the air with us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or Skype in. No one Skyped in yet tonight. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm and just send a quick contact request. It'll be approved. It'll be easy for you to call on Skype from that point forward. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. Uh, you haven't even been home yet, have you? No, I you, can't. You literally look like you just got off an airplane. I, yes, I got off the airplane. Hold on. No, it was last night and I stayed the night at a friend's house in mm. Manchester so I could go to the Republican state convention uh. thing and vote on the platform uh, for the Republican Party here in New Hampshire. Yeah, well, welcome back. Glad to have you back here, Mark. And, of course, you can join us on our website at freetalklive.com between now and the next show. And coming up, I mentioned Keenvention. We're going to get to your calls here in just a moment. But I mentioned Keenvention. We actually had Kristen on the line. She just happened to call in, and I, I recognized her uh, as one of the attendees of last year's Keenvention. The very first Keenvention was last year. Now, Keenvention is uh, it's a, it's a, it's my little convention, I guess. Uh, I, th I throw it. I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather hand it off to somebody, and maybe I can find no. I'll do it. <laughs> maybe I can. I've not asked yet, Mark. Uh, maybe I can find someone to take the reins next year um, because I've got a lot going on. But it's it's a lot of fun, and I'll continue doing it as long as I possibly can because uh, I didn't know how it was going to go last year. I really didn't know how many people were going to attend it. Turned out it was really great. There were about 115 people that came out for Keenvention, and and Kristen was saying it was this warm, welcoming atmosphere, and I'm glad that she felt that way. It, I thought it was this great, intimate event where, you know, it's a convention. We've got a panel, you know, several panels up there, and they speak about various different topics, activism-related, you know, whether it's legislative uh, activists here or people who are doing civil disobedience, cop block. Uh, there's a brand new cop block panel going to happen this year. New movers to New Hampshire. Sure, as part of the Free State Project, that's going to be another new panel this year. So we've got panel discussions like a good convention should have. We've got keynote speeches uh, to wrap out the day like a good convention should have. So it's got all the trappings of a convention, but it's smaller than, say, like the Liberty Forum, which is something that the Free State Project puts on in the wintertime here in New Hampshire. Which, by the way, you know, I plan on being at the Liberty Forum, too. That's a great event. There's no doubt about it. But Liberty Forum attracts like 700 people over that weekend. And again, Keenvention, much smaller. We focus on activism. We don't bring any of the fancy, libertarian, big-name speakers in from any other place. All of the speakers at Keenvention, they're activists based here in New Hampshire. Many of the names you'll be familiar with. You've heard us talk about them or talk to them here on Free Talk Live. So you get to meet some of these people in person. And if you've never been to New Hampshire before, or even if you've been before, it's a great excuse to come up here, check out the Keene area, and meet some of the great activists that are actually on the ground here. Mark, you're going to be hosting a panel this year, the, That's right. the news media panel. And we actually haven't publicly announced who all your panelists are yet. Do you want to go ahead and uh, throw that out there? All right, let's see. I've got uh, Chris Cantwell, um, Stephanie Murphy. I've got uh, Brett Vanoy. Can the two of them exist on the same panel, uh, Chris Cantwell and Stephanie Murphy? I think they can. Should be interesting. And uh, Garrett Ian. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And of course, if for some reason you can't make it, I'm going to record everything. In fact, you can go back to you can go to Keenvention.info. You can watch the entirety of Keenvention 2013 in different videos. We have, uh, you know, all of the panels and speeches all on video. So you can see what it was like and get a taste of what Keenvention was like. But it's only a taste because you only get to see what happened on stage. You don't get to see the conversations between all the people attending that happen off of the stage during the breaks and, you know, that sort of thing. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different this year. We've got the costume party because Keenvention this year is October 31st through November 2nd, October 31st, Halloween night. So costume party time. Derek J., our Monday night co-host, he's putting it together. And if Derek J. is in charge of throwing a party, you're going to want to be there. 
uh, for it. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Go to keenvention.info. Tickets are 60 bucks for the whole weekend or pay with Bitcoin. Just had a Bitcoin order come in a couple of days ago. And uh, I checked the orders today. It looks like we're on track for being about the same size as last year. So again, it's going to be a nice intimate uh, event with probably around 100 plus uh, people. And I'm looking forward to it. So go to keenvention.info as we go to your calls and thoughts. Elma, listening in Georgia, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Elma. Oh, hey, sweetie. Well, hi there. All right. I homeschooled my son. He's fixing to be 22. And <laughs> I was one of the first ones in this county to do it. I caught hell. He's I fixing really to be did. 22. He's, she's not homeschooling yeah. him anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, so yeah, the homeschooling's he's 22, over? But I caught it. And uh, when he went, he had to take a GED to get his diploma. And they made him take a test that was different from everybody else's because he was homeschooled. Really? He was held to a higher standard. Huh. I'm surprised at that. Explain that one to me. Well, it, it, there's no explaining. It's government arbitrary rules. They make that stuff up as they go along. Oh, they they gave him. They gave it to him. Really? They gave mean? it to him bad. Well, what he happened? passed every one of them. And they told me he was the smartest kid they ever seen. Well, fantastic. You know what? That he tends to be the to case. I, I, that tends to be the case with uh, a lot of homeschools is they're really brilliant folks because they've been able to, in a lot of ways, sort of follow their own educational volition. Uh, look He's into the, the areas best that are most you interesting. could ever see in your life. He's a good man. I believe you, Elma, and I thank you for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is 855 450 free. Now, Mark, you are homeschooling uh, Jack. He's yeah. your six year old son. Is there is there an unschooling aspect with what you're doing with Jack, or is there some directed kind of, you know, you and Laura are figuring out what he needs to learn? Because unschooling is kind of a different approach to homeschooling. Well, unschooling is what the parents decide to make it. Um, what I see, what I do is I look for opportunities, uh, things that Jack's interested in talking about at any given time. What's his thing right now? Like he used to be into the solar system? Right now he's uh, into Star Wars. Okay. Um, you know, he, <laughs> Star Wars is what he wants it's to do. an extension do. of the solar system. You know. Uh, it, a galaxy far, far away a long time ago. If you think about uh, adults, um, many of them spend a lot of time thinking about entertainment that mm -hmm. they like. So I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with it as long as you can incorporate stuff in. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously with Star Wars, we talk about concepts that have to do with space and, and that kind of thing. But probably mostly what we're doing as far as education is, is he loves to read comic books and books with us. Hmm. And so we make him read some and we read some. And he's six years old. Any reading that goes on from a six-year-old is reading above their, uh, you know, their grade level. When I, was in six, uh, when I was six years old in kindergarten, we were reading things like cat and dog. Um, wow. I mean, he's well above um, that reading level. So, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know that there's other kids that can't read as well as he can, mm -hmm. so he never feels held back. There's no, there's no standard to push towards or be held back by. Sure. Just you know, to him, he's he's never he's never existed in a world because we had the that got the baby reading kit, babyreadingkit.com for him. Uh, he's never existed in a world where he didn't have some understanding of, of words. He also doesn't have bullies to deal with or any other terrible things. Yeah, that you know, I mean, you don't happen. Uh, the, the, one of the problems with schools is you put a bunch of kids who otherwise are completely unrelated together, and you're going to get some of that Lord of the Flies thing. And, and you know, if uh, if you want your kid uh, roughed up and treated crappy, you can do it yourself. But that's what the you know a lot of the people who de defend the government schools will say. They say you need to have your, your kids socialized. Your child's but not what do they know. mean when they say socialized? Do they mean roughed up and treated crappy? Well, that that is what happens. Because right? I have been to work at a lot of different locations, um, even construction sites. I have never been treated so poorly, besides prison and jail, than I was in government school. My list mm. goes, um, you know, for being treated poorly, jail, prison, government school, work. Now, why? Hold in the up. Wait, jail was worse. Prison, not as bad. Yeah, I think jail was worse than prison personally. Mm. Um, but the. Jails, prisons, government schools, all institutions of the government. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when it really comes down to it, these uh, the, the schools, whatever this socialization thing is, it's not preparing people for what I have experienced in real life. If I was treated the way in a workplace, the way I was treated in school, mm -hmm. I would sue my boss. You because, can also leave. Well, you can. You can choose not to go to work the next day, or you can get another job and those kind of things. If you your can't, kid doesn't go to the government schools and you haven't begged for permission to leave, they'll send men with guns to your house. 
And they, yeah, but well, unlikely. Um, oh, yeah, they will. But it'll take truancy. some time. Yeah. It I, won't be the next day. I don't think they care that much anymore. It won't be the next day. Mark, we've seen stories within the last decade where they have absolutely sent investigators out to parents' homes. Uh, in a lot of cases, sometimes it's because they believe the child's going to a different school. Like that they're sending their kid to a different government school rather than the official school. Well, there's to. that. I mean, that's a big deal for yeah. them because, oh, no, you must send, uh, you know, this government school's crappy, the one near your house, and you want to send your mm-hmm. kid to another government school? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're stealing from taxpayers. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's insane. By the way, I did, uh, uh, when I grew up, I went to the public school that was for my grandmother's house rather than the public school for my house because the one for my house was, wasn't as good. So it has uh, Jack seen all three Star Wars? I guess there's six now. All um, six? I believe we didn't. We don't have Phantom Menace and uh, the clone, the, the Attack of the Clones, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we have to get those. And I hear there's a new one coming out soon. That's very exciting. We're out of time for tonight. See you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, at freetalklive.com. Have a super weekend. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the Realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The